In a realm where the allure of wealth, fame, and power consumes the hearts of men, a legend was born. Once upon a time, a man emerged from the depths of the vast ocean, his name echoing through the annals of history like a thunderous tempest. They called him the Pirate King Gol D. Roger, a man who defied the boundaries of this world, seizing everything within his grasp. It was said that his exploits were legendary, his deeds etched in the fabric of time itself. But as the winds of destiny whispered their secrets, Gold D. Rogers' story took an unexpected turn. Handcuffed and standing tall upon an elevated execution platform in the heart of a bustling town, his eyes betrayed a mix of defiance and resignation. Two men, their swords crossing in a deadly X before him, embodied the imminent fate that awaited the pirate king. The crowd gathered below, their collective breath held captive by the weight of this historic moment. The atmosphere crackled with a potent blend of anticipation, fear, and awe. Roger's face bore a wicked smile, as if he reveled in the chaos and uncertainty he had sown. And then, with his final breath, his voice dripping with enigma, he uttered the words that would reverberate across the globe, transcending the boundaries of life and death. My treasure, if you desire it, then seek it out, for I have left all that exists in this world there, he declared his words carrying the weight of a thousand possibilities. The execution platform became the epicenter of a revolution that would engulf the world in its wake. The town, once just a backdrop to Roger's demise, would soon bear witness to the birth of a new era, an era defined by the pursuit of dreams, the clash of ambitions, and the untold treasures awaiting those daring enough to seize them. As the swords gleamed above Goldie Roger, ready to descend upon him, the world held its breath, sensing that this act of execution would not be the end, but rather the beginning of an extraordinary journey, a journey that would forever change the lives of countless souls and shape the course of nations. The Great Pirate Age was about to unfold, and the world stood poised on the precipice of a grand adventure, driven by the enigmatic words of a man who refused to let his legacy fade into obscurity. Thus the world ushered in the Great Pirate Age. One Piece. Story was made by Aichiro Oda. The East Blue Saga. Romance Dawn. Twelve years later in a small seaport village nestled along the shores, time seemed to slow down under the gentle caress of the east wind. On the harbor, a docked pirate ship, weathered and worn from its countless voyages, rode against the tides of the sea. The pirates exchanged curious glances, their gazes drawn to the figurehead of the ship, where a young boy stood, defiant against the backdrop of the peaceful village. This boy, known as Monkey D. Luffy, possessed a spirit that burned brighter than ever before. A man wearing a straw hat approached the boy and called out to him, Oi! What are you doing, Luffy? The boy's gaze pierced the man's eyes as he held firm to his resolve. Adorned in a shirt emblazoned with the word anchor, with his left hand, he clutched a knife as he proclaimed, I'm not joking this time. I've had enough. I'll prove it for you all to see. The man in the straw hat chuckled heartily as he laughed. Go for it. Let's see what you're going to do, he encouraged. But among the onlookers, there was a voice filled with skepticism. Luffy is going to do something funny again, one man amused. Undeterred by the murmurs of skepticism, Luffy took a decisive step forward. With a daring that defied reason, he raised the knife and brought it down swiftly without hesitation. The knife found its mark as he stabbed himself just underneath his eye. A collective gasp escaped the lips of the surrounding pirates as Luffy's pain-filled cry pierced the air. The pirates alike stood frozen in disbelief, unable to comprehend the audacity of Luffy's act. The man in straw hat shouted with worry, Idiot! What the hell are you doing? 
Yet amidst the cacophony of Luffy's screams, there was a glimmer of something extraordinary the pirates did not expect. Within the heart of Windmill Village, amidst the lively atmosphere of Party's Bar, pirates and the spirited boy Luffy had gathered. A raucous proposal to raise their glasses in celebration of Luffy's audacity and their own demeanor echoed through the air. Let's drink up and celebrate to Luffy's craziness and to our greatness, cried a pirate. Inside the bustling bar, men reveled in the mirth of camaraderie. Laughter and conversation intermingled with the clinking of glasses and the aroma of sumptuous meals. Amidst the revelry, a mischievous monkey swung from the rafters. Pirates of all shapes and sizes, each with their own tales of adventure, indulged in the festivities. Amidst the joyous chaos, one pirate, filled with laughter, urged everyone to continue drinking. Drink, drink, he exclaimed, raising his own mug in a toast to revelry. Another pirate, fueled by the spirit of celebration, called for more sake. Meanwhile, two other pirates engaged in a playful yet heated dispute over a succulent piece of meat. The first pirate vehemently claimed ownership, shouting, Idiot! That's my meat! While the second pirate defiantly retorted, Shut up! It's mine! Amidst the revelers, a fat man indulged himself by drinking directly from a barrel of beer. With a hearty chuckle, he jokingly interjected, Yo, cut it out! To brawl while you're drunk is so shameful. In the midst of the revelry, Luffy, now patched up from his earlier act of self-inflicted pain, spoke with a mixture of pride and vulnerability. Ah, it didn't hurt one bit, the boy said with a hint of tears. The man with the straw hat addressed the boy sternly, Liar! Don't do anything so stupid again! Luffy, undeterred, proclaimed, I'm not afraid of pain at all. Next time take me out to sea, he said with glee. I want to be a pirate, too. The man before him revealed to be the pirate leader known as Red-Haired Shanks. His most striking feature was his deeply crimson red hair, cascading his allure from his curtained bangs. Yet it was his eyes that truly mesmerized all who beheld him, as a set of triple parallel linear scars marked his left eye. Atop his head, he proudly sported a weathered straw hat, supported with a vibrant red band. Shanks expressed his doubts in a sporting manner. You can't handle being a pirate. Not being able to swim is a pirate's greatest weakness, he declared. Luffy boasted, as long as I stay on board the ship, I'll be fine. Besides, my fighting skills are pretty good too. I've rigorously trained before. My punch is as strong as a pistol fire. Shanks, seemingly unimpressed, responded, pistol? Wow. Really? The tone of his words struck a nerve with Luffy, who bristled with anger. What kind of tone is that? He retorted. In the lively tavern, the pirates had formed a line, swaying and dancing with the jovial fat man at the center. To the fat man's left stood a man donning a kerchief, emblazoned with the name Yasup. A fellow pirate noticed Luffy's despondent expression and remarked, Luffy, you seem unhappy. Yasup, the man with the kerchief, interjected with words of encouragement, saying, Be happy to face anything. Lucky Roo chimed in, affirming, Yeah, a pirate's life is great. Another pirate added, The sea is vast and full of wonders. You can visit any island and encounter countless adventures. And yet another proclaimed with a foot on his face, Nothing is greater than freedom. Luffy's eyes widened with fascination at the pirate's words. Shanks, the pirate captain, interjected, urging the men, Don't give him these dumb ideas, guys. The fat man argued, But it's the truth, right? Yasup agreed to Lucky's statement. Sensing the growing excitement, one pirate suggested to the captain, Captain, why don't you take him with us one time? It's not a big deal. Luffy and another pirate eagerly concurred. Shanks, considering the proposal, ordered, Well then, next time, one of you will step off the ship and let him take your place. The men, hearing their captain's decision, turned and skipped away, while Lucky playfully remarked, We've said enough. Let's drink. What kind of friends are you? Luffy contested. Shanks, with a calming tone, stated, The most important thing is that you're still too young. Wait at least another ten years and I'll reconsider taking you out to sea. Luffy, boasting in defiance, retorted, Darn it, Shanks! Let me tell you, I'm not a kid anymore! The red-haired captain attempted to soothe Luffy's anger, offering him a cup, saying, Don't be mad. Here, drink some juice. 
Luffy accepted the gesture and happily sipped the juice, but Shanks couldn't help but laugh and shed a few tears. You really are a kid? How funny, he exclaimed. Luffy, feeling tricked, barked, what a dirty trick. Disappointed, Luffy mumbled, I'm so tired. I even cut myself today and he still won't agree, as he turned away. In the background, the female bartender diligently served customers, her warm smile illuminating the scene. A man smoking a cigarette tried to explain Shanks's perspective to the young boy, saying, Luffy, you should try to understand the captain's feelings. Luffy, questioning, responded, understand Shanks's feelings? The man continued, yes, after all, he is our leader. He knows that being a pirate is interesting, but he also knows that a pirate's life is hard and very dangerous. Luffy pondered it silently, as a wanted poster of Mikio Itu hung on the tavern wall. Luffy, still perplexed, exclaimed, I don't understand. Shanks just takes me for an idiot, which Shanks confirmed by mockingly repeating, can't swim. Luffy challenged, see? Marquino, the bartender, observed the exchange, remarking, Captain, you seem as happy as always, her smile revealing a hint of sympathy. Shanks replied, yep, making fun of him is my joy. Luffy turned to the smoking man once more while pointing to Shanks, expressing his frustration that the captain wasn't taking him seriously. The man assured him, he really is very happy. Holding a barrel of beer, Marquino offered, Luffy, would you like to eat something? Luffy declared, okay, I'll pay you with my treasure. Shanks skeptically questioned, what treasure? You're lying again. Luffy vehemently denied, saying, no, I'm definitely gonna be a pirate. I'll pay her with the treasure I find. Marquino chuckled and replied, I'll be waiting, as the child burst into laughter. Luffy sat patiently, fork and knife in hand, eagerly awaiting his meal. Finally, Marquino brought Luffy and Shanks their meals. As Luffy struggled to take a bite of a large piece of meat, he questioned him, how long are you gonna stay? The red-haired captain replied, well, it's almost been a year since we started using this town as our base. I plan on setting sail a couple more times, then we'll leave this town and head north. Luffy, contemplating Shanks's words, managed to take a satisfying bite. A couple of times, he mused, Marquino observed him. As she washed dishes, Luffy proudly declared, I'll learn how to swim by then. Shanks, accepting the challenge, replied, All right, good luck, he promised sincerely. Suddenly, the heavy wooden doors were kicked open, causing a hush to fall over the entire place. A man, accompanied by a group of followers, strode in confidently, his presence demanding attention. Excuse me, he called out, his voice cutting through the silence. His eyes surveyed the scene, taking in the boisterous group before him. With a smirk, he remarked, so this is what pirates look like, huh? This is the first time I've seen pirates. They look pretty dumb to me. To his surprise, the fat man and the smoking man at the bar seemed unfazed by his sudden intrusion. Meanwhile, Luffy sat nearby, eating a peculiar purple fruit, visibly puzzled as to what is going on. The stranger made his way toward the bartender, heading towards Shanks, who held a bottle of sake in his hand. The men accompanying the stranger wore similar outfits, giving them a distinct appearance. Higuma, the leader of the bandits, had with him black hair that fell effortlessly over broad shoulders, accompanied by a well-groomed goatee. Above his right eye, an X-shaped scar spoke of battles won. Cloaked in a long, fiery red coat, Higuma commanded attention. We are bandits, Higuma declared. We're not here to cause any trouble. We just want to buy ten barrels of sake. However, Marquino, the woman working at the bar, regretfully informed Higuma that they had run out of sake. Curiosity flickered in the stranger's eyes as he looked back at the pirates, questioning what they were drinking instead. Oh, that's strange. Then what are they drinking? Is it water? The bandit confirmed. The bartender apologetically replied, It's sake, but that's all we have. Sensing the bandit's disappointment, Shanks apologized. I'm sorry. Looks like we've finished all the sake here. Sorry about that. He offered Higuma the last bottle as a gesture of goodwill, saying, here, if you don't mind, take the last bottle. However, Higuma's displeasure was evident as he promptly smashed the bottle against Shanks's face, shattering it and causing the drink to spill onto the red-haired pirate. Luffy, witnessing the commotion, jumped down from his seat near Shanks. 
Marquino trembled with fear, while the bandits found amusement in the situation. The smoking man remained unfazed, and the young boy held a half-eaten fruit, bewildered by the unfolding events. Just who do you think I am? Don't take me so lightly. One bottle is not enough, Higuma proclaimed with arrogance. Oh no, now the floor is all wet, Shanks commented. The bandit questioned whether the pirate was unaware of his reputation. In response, Higuma brandished his wanted poster, displaying his bounty over him. See this? My head is worth eight million berries. I'm one of the prime fugitives here, and I've killed 56 people before you, cocky bastard. With indifference, Shanks ignored the bandit's words, picking up a large shard of the broken bottle from the ground. He turned to Marquino, apologizing. Sorry about that, Marquino. Do you have a mop? Ah, it's all right. I'll clean it up, Marquino responded. Unyielding, Higuma drew his sword and slashed the table, causing the plates to shatter. Well, it seems like you really enjoy cleaning. Now you can enjoy doing it more, he taunted, convinced of Shanks's cowardice. Later, you bunch of chickens. With those parting words, Higuma left the bar, sneering at the pirates. Outside, two frightened citizens cowered behind a nearby building, observing the bandits' departure. Higuma remarked, What a pathetic town. It doesn't even have sake. Let's move on to the next town. Inside the bar, as the tension gradually subsided, Marquino approached Shanks, expressing her concern. Are you all right, Captain? Did you get hurt? Shanks reassured her. No, I'm fine. A smirk began to play on his lips, causing himself and the crew to burst into laughter. The lucky Rue chimed in. Our captain looks so silly, another pirate added laughing. He fixed you up good, Captain. The crew's lightheartedness irked Luffy, and his frustration bubbled to the surface. Why are you laughing? He demanded. Perplexed, the crew looked at one another, unable to comprehend Luffy's reaction. That was disgraceful. Why didn't you fight him? Luffy shouted as he continued. So what if they have more people? Who laughs after getting picked on? You're not a man and not a pirate either. Shanks fixed his gaze on the young boy, his eyes studying him intently for a moment. Then with a calm demeanor, he said, look, I know how you feel, but it's just a bottle of sake. There's nothing to get worked up about. Luffy, turning away in anger, attempted to walk away, but Shanks reached out and grabbed his arm, preventing his departure. Oh, come on, don't go, Luffy, he pleaded, hoping to mend the situation. However, Luffy stood firm, refusing to yield. I don't want to see you again, coward, he retorted. As he moved away, a remarkable sight unfolded before everyone's eyes. The boy's arm stretched unnaturally, leaving everyone in awe. His arm! It's stretching! Shanks exclaimed, that's... The crew, stunned by the spectacle, struggled to find words. No way! You! They stammered. Luffy, bewildered by his own abilities, cried out, What's happening? In a mix of confusion and fear. The fat man, searching through a box, suddenly realized something was amiss. With a look of panic, he exclaimed, It's gone! The rubber rubber fruit we took from the enemy isn't here! Sweat trickled down the Lucky's forehead as he showed Luffy a drawing of the purple, swirling fruit he had consumed earlier. His voice quivered as he asked, Luffy, did you eat this? Oblivious, Luffy confirmed, Well, yeah, isn't that dessert? It tastes pretty bad, though. Stepping forward, Shanks positioned himself in front of the young boy and delivered a sobering revelation. That's the rubber rubber fruit. It's one of the fruits of the devil and one of the rarest treasures in the sea. Luffy stood frozen in disbelief. Shanks continued, whoever eats it will turn into a rubber man and will never be able to swim. Luffy's shock was palpable as he stammered, what? You're kidding, right? Shanks, however, dismissed his disbelief with a single word, calling him an idiot. The sun cast a warm golden glow upon the picturesque windmill village where life moved at a leisurely pace. Luffy, the spirited young boy with an infectious smile, skipped along the village streets, his eyes sparkling with excitement. He made his way to the local fish market, a small stall run by a kind-hearted shopkeeper. With his arms outstretched and a wide grin on his face, Luffy called out cheerfully, I want to buy some fish, Mr. Storekeeper. The shopkeeper and his wife exchanged amused glances, delighted to see the boy brimming with joy. 
Hey, Luffy, you look like you're in a good mood today, the shopkeeper remarked. So did the pirates leave you behind again? Either way, you can't swim anymore. Luffy shrugged off the notion. That's all right. I'll just be a pirate who doesn't fall into the sea. He stretched his cheeks, contorting his face into a comically exaggerated smile. After eating the rubber rubber fruit, I've become even happier. Look! A grizzled old man with a striped purple hat stood behind Luffy, voicing his disapproval. What's so good about that? Maybe the whole village thinks that's cool. But what good does that do? Having a rubber body. Luffy affectionately called the man chief and paid no mind to his skepticism. The old man perched atop a crane attempted to dissuade him. I'm going to tell you again, Luffy. Don't become a pirate. It'll ruin this town's reputation. The captain may look like a reasonable person, but don't hang out around him again. Undeterred by the old man's cautionary words, Luffy headed back to Party's Bar. He found himself in the cozy ambiance of Party's Bar. The atmosphere was lively, yet the absence of familiar faces left the air tinged with a hint of loneliness. Luffy and Marquino, a kind-hearted woman, were the only occupants of the bar, as she diligently cleaned a glass with practiced precision. Sensing Luffy's solitude, Marquino gently inquired, They've been away for a while now. Do you feel lonely, Luffy? Luffy shook his head defiantly. Nope, I haven't forgiven them for the bandits incident yet. Fiddling with a glass that held only a few cubes of ice, Luffy expressed distastefully. I overestimated Shanks. I thought he was a tough pirate. What a disappointment. Marquino offered a different perspective. Really? I thought, people who could laugh it off after getting picked on are pretty brave. A mischievous grin played on Luffy's lips as he explained, that's because you don't understand. There are times when a man should fight back, the bartender chimed in, her laughter ringing through the bar. Oh, I guess I don't know anything then, Luffy affirmed her with a nod. That's right, you don't. Suddenly, the creaking sound of the bar's entrance drew their attention. A man stepped inside, his presence unexpected. Luffy's eyes widened with surprise as he recognized the newcomer, Higuma. Accompanying him were his band of ruffians, their aura ominous and foreboding. Well, looks like the pirates aren't here today, Higuma sneered with contempt. It sure is quiet. We're back again. As the bandits settled themselves at the tables, Luffy and Marquino watched them closely, an unspoken tension hanging in the air. The bandit leader called out to bartender, his demand harsh and forceful. What are you waiting for? We're customers. Bring us some sake. Time passes, the sun casting long shadows over the quiet village. With urgency, Marquino rushes through the narrow streets. Her eyes search frantically for the chief, a respected figure known for his calm demeanor. Finally, Marquino finds the mayor seated on a worn-out chair, a steaming cup of tea in his weathered hands. Without wasting a moment, Marquino blurts out, her voice trembling with shock. Chief, hurry! Something bad has happened! The mayor looks up his eyes narrowing in concern. What's wrong, Marquino? What's this fuss about? He asks with curiosity. Breathing heavily, Marquino hastens to explain. Luffy was kidnapped by the bandits. The village trembles under the weight of fear as Luffy, held off the ground by a menacing bandit, Higuma, finds himself in a perilous hostage situation. The bandits, their eyes filled with curiosity and malice, examine Luffy's unique physique, muttering among themselves, what an interesting body. Seems like kicking and punching won't do any harm to it. Behind closed windows, the villagers peer out, their voices filled with a mixture of concern and hesitance. Hey, hey, go save Luffy, one of them cries out, but another chimes in. But they're bandits. We could get killed. Besides, Luffy messed with them in the first place. Luffy's voice rings out as his cheek stretches to its limit. Damn it! Apologize to me right now, you bastard! Higuma, reveling in his sadistic taunting, sneers at Luffy. Oh, a rubber man, huh? Who would have thought such a thing exists in this world? With a cruel tug, he pulls Luffy's cheek down, causing the boy to bounce painfully against the ground. Defiantly, Luffy grits his teeth, shouting, Damn it! You'll be sorry for this! The bandit leader, intrigued by the uniqueness of Luffy's abilities, contemplates the lucrative possibilities. A different type of human. If I sell him to a circus, I can surely get a lot of money. 
he muses. Refusing to succumb to his captor's cruelty, Luffy seizes a wooden club and dashes toward the bandit leader. However, before he can strike, Higuma raises his leg, his voice dripping with contempt. Brat! Caught off guard by the bandit's swift counterattack, Luffy takes a heavy blow to his face, stumbling backward. We were just having a good time drinking and talking. Did we say something pissed you off? Higuma taunted. Yes, you did. Apologize right now. Damn it, Luffy shouts. The villagers, observing the brutal exchange, offer their comments from the safety of their homes. Luffy sure is hot-headed. Why in the world did he start trouble with them? One whispers, while Luffy shouts, Move your damn foot, you damn bastard! The chief, unable to bear witness to Luffy's suffering any longer, musters his courage and raises his voice. Let the child go! Marquino, standing by his side, adds her plea. Please, he pressed. A heavy silence descends upon the scene, the tension thick in the air. The chief continued, I don't know what Luffy did, and I don't want to argue with you, but I'm willing to pay. So please let the child go. As the chief kneels on his hands and feet, his plea for mercy hangs in the balance. Worriedly, Luffy mumbles out his chief. But Higuma, relishing in his newfound power, presses his cruel monologue. As one would expect, it's the elders that know the proper way to deal with any situation. But it's too late. You can't save this little brat now because he really makes me angry. With his foot, he begins to squish Luffy's head. Fine, I'm not gonna sell you. I'll kill you instead, as Higuma raises his sword. Unexpectedly, Shanks appears behind Marquino and the chief. With a knowing smile, he addresses the bandits casually. I was wondering why no one welcomed us at the port. So this is why, hey, you guys are the bandits from the other day. Shanks pressed further. Luffy, what's wrong? Isn't your punch as strong as pistol fire? Shanks inquires. Shut up, Luffy angrily retorts back. Higuma sneers at the captain. Pirate, why are you still here? Are you going to clean up the whole town this time? I suggest you leave right now. If you get any closer, I might have to open fire, you coward. The threat hangs in the air as uncertainty shrouds the outcome of this dire confrontation. Shanks takes a confident step forward, undeterred by the guns pointed at him. A burly bandit, fueled by his bravado, directs his gun straight at Shanks' head, his finger clicking against the trigger. Mocking laughter echoes through the barren landscape, drowning out any other sound. Shanks locks eyes with the bandit. Your life's at stake here, Shanks calmly states, his voice cutting through the laughter. I'd quit pointing that gun at me. The bandit, taken aback by Shanks' defiance with a mixture of surprise and shock. Huh? What did you say? Shanks repeated his words carefully. I said, don't use this to scare people. Before anyone can react, a thunderous gunshot shatters the silence. Lucky Roo, the fat man, acts swiftly, shooting the bandit without a moment's hesitation. Everyone, except for Shanks' crew, stands stunned with disbelief. A surge of aggression courses through the bandits as they realize the gravity of the situation. Now, now you've done it, bastard! Damn it, that was dirty! Yasup, a member of Shanks's crew, questions. Dirty? A man, his face obscured by a cloud of smoke, steps forward confidently. Don't make us laugh. Do you think we're saints or something? Shanks turns to Higuma, the leader of the bandits, filled with resolve. The people standing in front of you are pirates! One of the bandits interjects sharply. Shut up! This is none of your business! Shanks delivers his message with unwavering conviction. Listen well, bandits. You can pour drinks on me, you can throw food at me, or even spit on me. I can laugh it off. But, he carefully stated, I don't care what reasons you have. I won't forgive anyone who messes with my friends. The young boy watched in awe. Higuma, unfazed by Shanks's impassioned speech, lets out a boisterous laugh. You won't forgive me? You, a bunch of pirates who float around on a ship all day, want to challenge us? We will destroy you! With those words, he signals his crew to attack. As Higuma's bandits charge forward, a figure steps out from the crew. It's Beckman, the smoking man known for his sharp wit and unmatched skill. Let me deal with this. I can take care of them myself, he stated. With a nonchalant flick of his hand, he casually places his lit cigarette onto the eye of one bandit, momentarily blinding him. Using his gun as an improvised club, 
Beckman swiftly incapacitates the rest of the charging bandits, delivering a series of calculated blows. Each swing of his weapon lands with devastating accuracy, leaving the attackers sprawled on the ground. With a steely gaze, Beckman points his gun directly at Higuma. He effortlessly lights a new cigarette and declares, Don't overestimate yourselves, bandits. If you want to fight us, you better get a fleet of marines to back you up. The weight of his words hangs in the air, leaving Higuma alone and trembling in the face of imminent defeat. Luffy, Marquino, and the chief amazement as Beckman single-handedly quells the bandit's assault. Amidst the aftermath of the confrontation, Higuma, now desperate, tries to shift the blame onto Luffy. Wait a minute! This little brat messed with us first! Shanks dismisses Higuma's feeble attempt. It doesn't matter. After all, there's a reward on your head. In a final act of desperation, Higuma drops a smoke bomb and seizes the opportunity to snatch Luffy away. Panic fills the air as the smoke dissipates, revealing Luffy's absence. Oh no, we got careless. They took Luffy. What should we do? Shanks cries out with worry. Lucky Roo steps forward. Captain, don't panic. Let's split up and find them. Beckman glances back at Shanks, concern etched on his face. That captain, he murmurs under his breath. Out in the vast expanse of the open sea docked next to red-haired pirate's ship, a lone boat bobbed gently on the waves away from the harbor, carrying two figures standing side by side. With a sinister grin, the bandit leader Higuma unleashed a boisterous laughter that echoed across the tranquil waters. Looks like we got away, he exclaimed with amusement. Who would have thought that a bandit would escape by boat? Well, I only used you as a hostage, but you're useless now. I've dealt with 56 people who dared to cross my path before, you know. Luffy clenched his fists as he shouted defiantly, Go to hell! Higuma's smile widened sadistically. Ha! So long! He sneered, delivering a swift kick that sent Luffy hurtling into the unforgiving embrace of the water. Damn it! Damn it! Luffy's mind screamed in frustration. You said they're cowards! I didn't even get one hit in! Bastard! Damn it! As Luffy struggled to stay afloat, his mind drifted back to a recent encounter with bandits at a rowdy bar. Memories surged within him, vividly recalling how he caused so much chaos. Remember the expression on those pirates' faces the other day? Higuma and his men mused, drinking in the tavern. He didn't even say anything after getting hit by a bottle. What gutless pansies. The bandits' laughter echoed in his ears each chuckle a twisted reminder of his own helplessness. Higuma interjected, fueling the fire within Luffy. When I see a chicken like that, it just makes me so mad. I really wanted to kill him. Pirates only know how to act cool. Shut up, Luffy's voice thundered. Don't underestimate Shanks. He's not a coward. Let it go, Luffy. Marquino tried calming him down, but Luffy, unwilling to back down, persisted. Don't underestimate Shanks. Struggling for dear life, Luffy fought against the relentless pull of the water. In the distance, a colossal sea creature emerged from the depths, an imposing sea king, its ferocious presence casting a foreboding shadow over the scene. Higuma's arrogance transformed into surprise as he glanced back in shock, trembling, Where, where did it come from? Without warning, the sea king lunged, its gaping jaws swallowing Higuma whole. The boat, caught in the creature's monstrous grip, crumbled under the weight, leaving Luffy defenseless and at the mercy of the ocean's wrath. Desperation consumed him as the Sea King dashed towards him, his cries for help merging with the lapping waves. But just as hope began to fade, a figure materialized, clutching him. It was Shanks, Luffy's savior, his gaze fixed upon the Sea King with unwavering intent. Get lost, Shanks commanded, his voice powerful and deadly. It flinched as the sea creature gazed into the eyes of Shanks. In a sudden retreat, the sea king slithered away, returning to the depths from whence it came. With the danger subsided, Shanks turned his attention to Luffy, a tender smile gracing his lips. Thanks, Luffy. Marquino told me about everything. Luffy, overcome with emotions, tears streaming down his face, choked on his words. The red-haired captain reassured him, thanks for sticking up for us. Hey, don't cry. You're a man, right? In the midst of his sobbing, Luffy managed to utter brokenly, But, Shanks, your arm! 
Shanks dismissed his concern of the chewed left arm as he patted remaining hand on top of his head. It's nothing, he replied calmly. It's just an arm, as long as you're alive. Luffy's heart shattered, a waterfall of tears flowing freely. The reason Shanks didn't take Luffy with him is that the seas is an unpredictable place. It's not something that humans can control, but Luffy understands how great Shanks really is, and he hopes to be just like him in the future. The docks and harbor bustle with activity as the red-haired pirates scurry around, preparing their ships for the adventures that await them on the grand seas. Shanks stands amidst the chaos, ready to embark on his next voyage. The young boy approaches him. You're really leaving this time? Luffy asks with uncertainty. Shanks agrees. We've stayed here long enough. It's about time we move on. Are you upset? He inquires. Luffy is disappointed, but he gathers his strength of courage. Yeah, but I won't force you to take me along anymore. I'll become a pirate by myself, he declares. With a mischievous grin, Shanks sticks out his tongue and retorts, Eh, I wouldn't take you even if you begged me. You don't have what it takes to become a pirate. Defiance burns in Luffy's eyes as he shouts back, Yes, I do! One day I'll find myself a crew that is as strong as yours, and then I'll find the world's biggest treasure and become the king of the pirates. Shanks, pleased by Luffy's unwavering spirit, reaches out and places his cherished straw hat on the young boy's head. Oh, so you want to be bigger than us, huh? Well then, this hat is my gift to you. When you become a great pirate in the future, return that hat to me. He trails off, his voice filled with pride. As Shanks boards his ship, ready to set sail, Beckman, one of his crew members, remarks, That kid's gonna be big. Shanks replies with a knowing smile, I know, because he reminds me of my early years. Pull up the anchor, set the sail. Luffy watches with his straw hat as tears poured from his eyes while Shanks and his crew disappear into the vast horizon. The straw hat serving as a constant reminder of the promise made that day, to become great pirates one day. And the youth's journey began just ten years later after Shanks's departure, leaving Windmill Village with a bittersweet sentiment among the villagers. Luffy now embarks on his own journey across the sea with his brand new boat. Marquino amuses, He finally left, Chief. We're going to miss him. He'll ruin this town's reputation. The chief refuses her. Whispers ripple through the townspeople as they comment on Luffy's unexpected dedication. I never thought he would be so serious about it they murmur. As seagulls soar gracefully above, Luffy, now grown up, drifts away from the village, savoring the pleasant weather. His thoughts are interrupted when a colossal deep sea king emerges, fixing its gaze upon him. I've been waiting for you, sea monster. This is your unlucky day. I'll show you what I've learned in the past ten years, Luffy proclaims. The deep sea king opens its massive jaws and charges toward Luffy. Undeterred, Luffy pulls his arm back, a triumphant smile on his face. Gomu, Gomu, no! Pistol! He exclaims as his stretchy arm propels forward, striking the creature's head from a distance. As the victorious punch connects, the deep sea king is sent crashing into the sea, defeated. Luffy, brimming with confidence, taunts, How did that taste, stupid fish? Spinning his arms in a circle, Luffy lets out a contagious laughter. I'll have to find some friends first. I hope I can find at least ten people, and then I'll make a flag, he exclaims, his excitement growing. With a determined gleam in his eyes, Luffy raises his hands in the air and declares, All right, let's go! I'll become the king of the pirates! Without any companions to accompany him, Luffy sets sail on a modest boat, equipped with only a barrel at the back. The beginning of his arduous journey unfolds before him, a path that promises both adventure and peril. Ah, the weather is pretty nice today. Brimming with excitement, the young man had recklessly embarked on a little boat, determined to make friends and assemble his own fleet of pirates. On a nice day like this, who would have thought I'd get into such a disaster? He chuckled, gripping the paddle firmly in his hands. But his amusement swiftly turned into alarm as he noticed a colossal whirlpool looming before him, its swirling vortex as vast as a ship. 
What a huge whirlpool, he muttered. How careless of me, his voice tinged with concern. As the whirlpool grew stronger, tugging at his tiny boat, Monkey D. Luffy cast a worried glance behind him. There's no one around me, he pondered aloud. It'll be really bad if this boat wrecks. A realization struck him. And on top of that, I can't even swim. Ah, wait a minute. It doesn't really matter if I know how to swim in a situation like this. Swimming won't save him here. However, his realization was in vain, for swimming alone wouldn't save him from the force of the whirlpool's pull. Helpless, Luffy found himself sucked into the relentless maelstrom, his screams blending with the roaring waters until there was nothing but darkness. Meanwhile, on a remote island, a love-hearted pink swan pirate ship lay docked, its elegant frame accumulating dust over time. Alvida, a formidable and ruthless pirate captain, pressed her finger against the ship's surface, her brows furrowing in discontent. Why is there so much dust? She questioned, her voice laced with irritation. One of her crew members trembled before her, hastily apologizing. A thousand pardons, Alvida. I thought I've already cleaned the whole deck. I... I'll clean it again, so... So please don't... Please don't hit me with your bludgeon. I don't want to die, E. Alvida's eyes narrowed, a glimmer of danger reflecting in them. Don't do what? She inquired, her voice low and threatening. The crew member's fear escalated as she brandished her giant black iron spiked mace, bringing it down upon one of her unfortunate subordinates. Please don't hit me with your bludgeon! I don't want to die! -y! The crew member shrieked. Turning her attention to Kobe, a timid pink-haired teenage boy with blue glasses, Alvida posed a question that sent shivers down his spine. Who is the most beautiful in all the seas? She demanded. Trembling, Kobe meekly replied, That'll be you, Alvida! A hint of satisfaction gleamed in her eyes as Alvida affirmed, That's right, and that's why I absolutely hate dirty things, so I don't want the slightest bit of dust on my ship, do you hear me? Her voice carried a resolute determination. I only let you live this long because you know more about navigation than the others. Alvida, a woman of imposing presence, possessed a formidable figure with a bulky, fat build. Her attire exuded authority as she donned a fitted black leather corset adorned with intricate silver embellishments. Her long, flowing black hair cascaded down her back, contrasting with her fair complexion. Sharp, piercing eyes, the color of obsidian, peered out from beneath heavily lined lids, conveying both intelligence and cruelty. Kobe, kneeling down in fear, stammered his gratitude. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. However, Alvida's tone turned sharply dismissive as she declared, But other than that, you're totally useless. Now clean my shoes. With a swift motion, she pushed her foot forward, demanding obedience. Kobe complied, following her order with trepidation. Keep cleaning and don't leave any dust behind, Alvida commanded her crew, and they hurriedly obeyed, carrying out her wishes with fear-stricken efficiency. That's enough for now, you piece of garbage, Alvida spat kicking Kobe with her foot. The blow cracked his glasses, blood trickling from his nose and mouth. Through his pain, Kobe managed to mutter an apology, but Alvida mocked him. If you have time to apologize, why don't you go clean the washroom? Kobe laughed it off, his tears mixing with the bloodstains on his face. Right away, Alvida. On my way, he responded, his voice trembling as he walked away, bearing the weight of his mistreatment. Sad and upset, Kobe pushes a barrel he found into Alvida's hideout on land, her flag with a love heart in the center of the skull fixed directly on the center of the storehouses. The hideout exudes an air of danger and secrecy, hidden away from prying eyes. The dilapidated buildings stand as a testament to the pirate crew's lawless existence. As Kobe approaches, three of Alvida's crew members, Hepico, Pepico, and Popico, stop him in his tracks. They tower over him, their intimidating presence casting a shadow on his already troubled state. Hepico bullies him, his voice laced with arrogance and contempt. What? You're saying that barrel of sake got washed up on shore, Kobe? Hepico jeers, a sneer playing on his lips. Kobe, with a mix of fear and determination, affirms his discovery. Yes, there seems to be something inside it. What should we do with it? Kobe's voice trembles as he tries to maintain composure amidst the crew's menacing gazes. The three crewmates exchange knowing glances, 
a devious plan forming in their minds. Great, let's all drink together, one of them suggests, a mischievous grin spreading across his face. Kobe's eyes widen in concern, knowing the consequences if their actions are discovered. But if the captain finds out, we'll be... Kobe's voice trails off, his worry palpable. He understands the risks involved in crossing Alvida's path. She won't find out. We're the only ones cleaning the wine cellar, so only us and stupid Kobe will know about this, one of the crewmates reassures, a hint of excitement in his voice. The third crewmate, his voice dripping with mischief, adds, You know what to do, right? Kobe? Kobe, feeling the weight of their expectations, replies nervously, his hands waving in the air. Of, of course, I, I haven't seen anything, so please don't beat me, he says, trying to lighten the tense atmosphere with a weak attempt at humor. Suddenly, the barrel comes alive as Luffy bursts out with both hands raised in the air, shocking everyone present. Pepoko, one of the crewmates, can't help but voice his confusion. What the hell? he exclaims, his eyes widening in disbelief. Luffy, seemingly unbothered by the commotion, shouts with joy and relief. What a nice nap that was! Looks like I'm saved! I thought I was gonna die too! Luffy's laughter fills the air, a stark contrast to the tension that had consumed the hideout mere moments ago. Everyone watches him, curiosity etched on their faces. Luffy, breaking the silence, gazes at the bewildered crewmates and asks, Who are you? In unison, the three crewmates respond, their voices filled with incredulity. Who the heck are you? Why would someone be coming out of a wine barrel? Before they can delve deeper into the strange encounter, their attention is diverted as Alvida's club smashes through the hideout, the forceful impact tearing through walls and scattering debris. Alvida's piercing voice rings out, demanding an end to their idleness. The hideout, once a semblance of refuge, is now a scene of destruction. Luffy, unable to maintain his balance, tumbles uncontrollably into the dense forest, while Kobe, driven by a mixture of fear and curiosity, flees after him. Left in the aftermath, the three crewmates cower on the ground, their faces etched with fear. Alvida looms over them, her presence dominating the space. She demands answers, her voice dripping with aggression. I ask you, what's the most beautiful thing in all the seas? Alvida's question hangs heavily in the air, her gaze drilling into their souls. That'll be you for sure, Alvida, the crewmates respond in unison, their words laced with desperation and flattery. Slightly mollified by their answer, Alvida presses further, her voice carrying a dangerous edge. Good, then why are you trying to disobey me? The crewmates scramble to deny the accusations, their voices filled with panic. Eh? Eh? No, we'll never do something like that, they protest, their words trembling with fear. Alvida, unconvinced, sharpens her gaze. Don't play dumb with me. I heard you guys say what a nice nap that was, all the way from the ship. Suddenly, realization dawns on one of the crewmates. He recalls Luffy's words, the puzzle pieces fitting together. Oh, that's right, Captain. There's an invader, he exclaims, his voice tinged with urgency. Another crewmate joins in, confirming the presence of the stranger. That's right. Just now, Kobe brought a strange guy. Alvida's curiosity peaked. She contemplates the situation, her mind racing with possibilities. What? Could it be someone who's trying to catch me and get a reward? Kobe? That brat dares to betray me? Her anger intensifies with each word. A crew member interjects, his voice filled with doubt. Could it be him? That famous... But another crewmate dismisses the notion, cutting off the speculation. Nonsense! I heard that he's still being held captive at the Marine's prison. Alvida, her mind made up, declares her conclusion with conviction. If he's the real thing, he must have escaped by now. That notoriously evil Roronoa Zoro. Elsewhere in the dense forest, sunlight filtered through the towering canopy, casting dappled shadows on the forest floor. Kobe, a young caretaker on the ship of the fearsome pirate, Iron Mace Alvida, stumbled upon an unusual sight. There, amidst the rustling leaves and chirping birds, he noticed a barrel, with a figure trapped inside. Concern etched on his face, Kobe approached the barrel cautiously, calling out to the imprisoned occupant. Um, are you all right? Did you get hurt? Kobe's voice echoed in the quietude of the forest. You got knocked pretty far. 
A burst of hearty laughter emerged from the barrel as Luffy, the adventurous spirit within, reassured Kobe. I'm fine, just a little surprised, that's all. I'm Luffy. What is this place? Glimmers of curiosity sparkled in Kobe's eyes as he realized that Luffy was oblivious to the dangerous surroundings. This, he replied, gesturing around them, is the breeding ground of the fearsome pirate, Iron Mace Alvida. I'm a caretaker on this ship. My name is Kobe. As Luffy emerged from the confinements of the barrel, he glanced at his rescuer and nonchalantly dismissed the significance of their location. I see. Actually, that's not important. Perplexed by Luffy's indifference, Kobe's brows furrowed in confusion. Before he could voice his thoughts, Luffy interjected, his attention focused on their immediate predicament. Do you have a small boat? Mine got caught in the whirlpool. Surprise rippled through Kobe's expression, his voice tinged with disbelief. Whirl, whirlpool? You were caught in a whirlpool? Luffy's affirmative nod sent shivers down Kobe's spine, vividly recalling the treacherous nature of such a phenomenon. With a mix of awe and concern, Kobe stammered, a normal person would have died already. You, you want a small boat? Well, I have one, but... With a hint of suspicion, Luffy examined the boat presented to him by Kobe, a humble, handcrafted vessel that had been a secret labor. His curiosity piqued, Luffy questioned, what's this, a coffin? Undeterred by Luffy's remark, Kobe explained the boat's significance, a glimmer of regret shadowing his eyes. That's a boat I built secretly for two years. Luffy remarked, spent two years. You don't want it anymore? A heavy sigh escaped Kobe's lips as he contemplated his own suppressed desires and faltering courage. Yeah, I don't want it anymore. I was going to run away in this, but I don't have the guts to do it. Looks like I'm going to be a caretaker my whole life. Although, I do have something else I want to do. Luffy's carefree demeanor remained unfazed as he offered an unexpected piece of advice. Then you should leave. Kobe's panic-stricken eyes widened, and he vehemently shook his head. No, no, I can't. It'll never work. Whenever I think of Alvita finding out, my legs turn all mushy. I get so scared. In a rush of emotions, Kobe recounted the circumstances that had led him to his current plight. That day... I was only fishing, but I accidentally walked onto this ship, and I had to become a caretaker on the ship these two years to stay alive. Unfazed by Kobe's vulnerability, Luffy's straightforward nature came to the forefront. You're pretty stupid and useless, and you seem kind of wimpy too. I don't like you, he quipped, laughter punctuating his words. Kobe winced at Luffy's blunt assessment, but amidst the pain he found a sliver of truth. But you're right. If only I'm brave enough. Hey, Luffy, why are you sailing? With a gleam of determination in his eyes, Luffy disclosed his audacious dream. I want to become the Pirate King! His smile radiated with unwavering conviction. Kobe's disbelief echoed in his incredulous tone. What? Pirate King was the title of someone who has had everything in this world. Are you telling me that you're looking for the world's greatest treasure, the One Piece? You want to die or something? All the pirates in the world are looking for that treasure. Luffy's response carried an air of nonchalance as he dismissed the risks. Well, so am I. The weight of Luffy's words crashed upon Kobe, leaving him stunned and bewildered. Impossible! Absolutely impossible! Utterly, utterly impossible! To become the pirate king in the pirate era, there is no chance! Utterly impossible! Without warning, Luffy's fist collided with Kobe's head, leaving a sizable bruise on his forehead. The pain brought forth an indignant cry from Kobe. Ow! Why'd you hit me? Unfazed by Kobe's agony, Luffy's voice reverberated with unfiltered honesty. Because I couldn't stand you. As Kobe rolled on the ground, an air of resignation settled within him, accompanied by a wistful chuckle. Oh well, I'm used to it anyway. Luffy's declaration resonated through the clearing, igniting a flicker of understanding within Kobe. I'm not afraid of dying. Perplexed, Kobe's gaze locked with Luffy's as he searched for meaning behind those words. Luffy continued, unwaveringly staring at his cherished straw hat. Because it's my dream, and that's why I won't mind dying for it. In a moment of clarity, Kobe found himself in awe of Luffy's resolute determination. His thoughts raced, captivated by such astounding resolution. Such amazing resolution. Won't even mind death? 
Luffy's voice broke the silence, laden with unwavering conviction. Besides, I think I can do it, although it could get pretty tough. A surge of hope coursed through Kobe's veins as he considered the weight of Luffy's words. I've never thought of that. His voice trailed off, lost in a sea of newfound possibilities. Then, with a tentative whisper, he voiced his own contemplations. Will I also be able to accomplish my dream? If I'm willing to die. Captivated by Kobe's sudden introspection, Luffy met his gaze, waiting for an explanation. What? With a newfound sense of purpose and resolve, Kobe boldly declared his own aspirations, tears streaming down his face. Will I be able to become a Marine? Perplexed by Kobe's unexpected dream, Luffy sought clarification. A Marine? Tears of determination mingled with Kobe's answer as he poured his heart out. Luffy, I know it means that we'll be enemies, but joining the Marines and catching bad guys has always been my dream. Do you think I can do it? Luffy, ever straightforward, offered no promises or assurances. I wouldn't know. Undeterred, Kobe's resolve solidified, his voice ringing with unyielding determination. I have to at least try. I'd rather die trying to get out of here and join the Marines than stay here and be a caretaker my entire life. And then Alvida, I'll be able to arrest someone like Alvida. His voice resounded with newfound conviction and purpose. Who did you say you are going to arrest, Kobe? Alvida's voice boomed, a tempestuous storm echoing in the air. Her words dripped with venom and a clear warning of the power she wielded. Luffy, a carefree and adventurous young man, regarded Alvida with an air of nonchalance. The destruction of Kobe's boat seemed inconsequential to him, as if it were merely a fleeting inconvenience. Kobe's heart sank as he realized the magnitude of the situation. My boat, Kobe muttered to himself, the weight of his shattered dreams pressing down upon him like an anchor dragging him beneath the waves. Unperturbed by Kobe's distress, Alvida sneered triumphantly. You think you can escape from me? Is that who you hired to capture me? He doesn't seem to be Roronoa Zoro, she taunted. Her words hung heavy in the air, thick with malice and a twisted sense of amusement. Before Kobe could gather his thoughts, Alvida continued her assault, her anger swelling with each passing moment. Anyway, before you die, I'm going to ask you, what's the most beautiful thing in the sea, Kobe? Her question hung like a blade poised to strike, an inescapable trap. Sweat dripped down Kobe's face, his nerves tangling like seaweed caught in a relentless current. Rubbing his hand nervously behind his pink hair, he mustered a trembling laugh and stammered, Of, of course, that'll be... Interrupting Kobe's feeble response, Luffy's voice rang out with an unexpected interruption. Who's this rude woman? He interjected, his curiosity piqued by the audacity of Alvida's presence. Alvida's fury flared, a tempest unleashed upon an unassuming world. Her crewmates, witnessing the unfolding confrontation, responded with indignant cries. That kid! He dares to- Seizing the moment, Kobe shouted at Luffy, his body trembling with urgency. Luffy, quick! Repeat after me! His voice quivered, carrying a desperate plea for assistance. In all the seas, this lady is the most- Kobe's voice trailed off uncertainty gripping his words. In that fleeting moment, Kobe's thoughts danced to a memory, a recollection of Luffy's own dream, a dream that involved risking everything for what one believed in. Summoning newfound courage, Kobe's voice rose, his words crashing against the shore of Alvida's rage. The rudest, damned bitch, he shouted with a ferocity that belied his former meekness. Alvida's gaze turned deadly, her silence a harbinger of impending doom. Luffy, however, found humor in the chaos, laughing uproariously at the audacity of his companion. You little brat! Alvida's rage resounded like thunder, a storm of fury unleashed upon the world. Kobe, his tears mingling with the salt water of the sea, whispered to himself through his trembling sobs, Don't regret it. I've already told myself to fight for my dream. In a fit of anger, Alvida struck out at Kobe, but before her blow could land, Luffy pushed Kobe back with a firm hand, shielding him from harm. Well said, Kobe. Now get behind me, Luffy commanded, his voice a lifeline amidst the chaos. Alvida's declaration hung in the air like a looming tempest. Both of you have to die! Her words carried the weight of a thousand storms, threatening to engulf them in a sea of oblivion. 
Unfazed by Alvida's wrath, Luffy leaned his head forward, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Alvida's mace crashed down upon him, only to bounce harmlessly off his rubberized body. It's useless against me because my body is rubber, Luffy proclaimed, his smirk triumphant. Alvida stared in disbelief, her bludgeon falling from nerveless hands. That's impossible! My bludgeon! She exclaimed, astonishment etching deep lines upon her face. The crewmates surrounding them mirrored her surprise, their eyes wide with disbelief as Luffy stood unscathed. Luffy coiled his right arm back, a tension building within his elastic muscles. Gomu! Gomu no! Pistol! He declared, his voice a battle cry. With a single punch, he sent Alvida crashing to the floor, unconscious and defeated. The crewmates gasped, their voices a chorus of disbelief. His arm! His arm extended! Captain! Alvida was beaten by that monster! They exclaimed in hushed whispers, their fear mingled with awe. Pointing a finger at Alvida's crewmates, Luffy issued a command, his voice brimming with authority. Prepare a boat for Kobe. He wants to join the Marines, so stay out of his way. His words hung in the air, a stark reminder of the power he commanded. Alvida's crewmates, cowed by Luffy's presence, nodded their reluctant agreement. Meanwhile, Luffy laughed, tears mixing with the droplets falling from Kobe's cheeks, a symphony of relief and newfound hope echoing across the vast expanse of the sea. Some time later, Luffy and Kobe found themselves sailing upon a new boat, venturing out to sea. The sun dipped below the horizon, casting an ethereal glow upon the waters as they embarked on their shared journey. Kobe couldn't contain his awe as he observed Luffy, the bearer of the devil fruit. You actually have the rubber rubber fruit. Awesome! He exclaimed, his voice filled with a mixture of admiration and disbelief. However, Kobe's excitement was tinged with concern as he turned his attention to the path that lay ahead. But, Luffy, if you're looking for the one piece, that means you have to get into the grand line, right? He questioned, his voice laced with uncertainty. Luffy, sitting at the head of the boat, nodded, his determination shining bright in his eyes. Kobe continued, But that place is known as the Pirate's Graveyard. Luffy pushed forward, saying, yeah, that's why I need a strong crew, and one of them is being held captive at the very place you mentioned, he replied, his words infused with a sense of purpose. Kobe's eyes widened in realization. You mean, Roranoa Zoro? He responded, his voice tinged with apprehension. The tales of Zoro's strength had reached even the furthest corners of the sea, painting him as a fearsome and unstoppable force. Luffy's optimism remained unyielding. If he's a good guy, I'd ask him to join me, he declared, his voice unwavering in its certainty. Kobe couldn't help but scoff, his doubts still lingering. What? You're dreaming again. You can't. He's like a monster, he exclaimed, his voice filled with both incredulity and concern. With a resolute expression, Luffy faced Kobe. We can't be sure about that yet, he asserted, his unwavering belief in the potential goodness of others shining through. Out at the open, clear seas with the cheers of seagulls about, Kobe and Luffy find themselves aboard a small boat, gently rocking with the rhythm of the waves. The crisp salt air fills their lungs as they engage in a lively discussion. The sunlight dances upon the shimmering surface of the water, casting a radiant glow that envelops the scene. Luffy, seated at the head of the boat, gazes out into the boundless expanse of the sea, his curiosity piqued. With a quizzical expression, he turns to Kobe and asks, Monster, huh? Kobe, his eyes fixed upon the distant horizon, responds with a tinge of caution in his voice. Yeah, Luffy. Roranoa Zoro is also known as the Pirate Hunter. He's a scary person. Rumor says he's like a bloodthirsty hound. He wanders around the sea and hunts down fugitives. He's a monster in the form of a man. Luffy, his straw hat casting a shadow over his determined face, raises an eyebrow and leans forward, intrigued. Oh yeah? He challenges. Kobe's eyes widen as he quickly waves his hands frantically, his voice filled with urgency. So let's drop the idea of recruiting him. Interrupting Kobe, Luffy turns around, his gaze piercing through his companion. His tone carries a hint of contemplation as he asserts, I haven't made up my mind about recruiting him yet. But if he's a good person, Kobe's voice rises, tinged with exasperation. 
He's arrested because he's bad. The tension lingers in the air as the boat continues its voyage, the vastness of the sea stretching out before them. Mysteries of the fabled Roranoa Zoro is yet to be uncovered. The discussion hangs in the air, their differing perspectives teasing at the boundaries of their friendship, while the seagulls overhead cry out, as if echoing the uncertainty that lies ahead. Sometime later, Luffy and Kobe finally arrive at the marine base where Zoro is being held. The Shell Town, the place they landed on, is a quaint coastal settlement, with rows of houses nestled closely around the formidable structure of the base. The air is filled with an aura of authority and strict discipline. Luffy, overwhelmed by their accomplishment, stretches his left arm high into the air and exclaims with excitement, We're finally at the Marine's base! Kobe, sharing his enthusiasm, agrees with a nod. Luffy, impressed by Kobe's navigational skills, praises him, You're great, Kobe! However, Kobe is taken aback by the compliment, his confusion evident on his face. Luffy, with a wide grin, declares, We've actually reached our destination. Kobe, ever the practical one, points out the obvious. Of course, that's the basics of navigation. If you wander around at sea every time, you'll never become a pirate. You should at least find a navigator to join you. Interrupting Kobe's words, Luffy's hunger takes over, and he happily exclaims, All right, let's go eat! The bustling streets of a vibrant town served as the backdrop to the encounter between Luffy and Kobe. Their hungry stomachs led them to a small, cozy restaurant known as Food Foo. Its sign, weathered by time, swung precariously above the entrance, barely holding on with a fork connected to the letter O. Inside the restaurant, Luffy, a jovial figure finished his food with a stuffed belly, sat across from Kobe, his tearful eyes betraying a deep sadness. Luffy, attempting to lift Kobe's spirits, offered his parting words, his voice filled with encouragement. We'll go our separate ways here. You do your best to be a great Marine, all right? Kobe, his hands rubbing against his moist eyes, sobbed as he mustered a reply. I will. Thank you so much, Luffy. You have to become a great pirate, too, although we'll be enemies in the future. Luffy, struck by a sudden thought, voiced his curiosity aloud. Say, I wonder if Zoro is still being kept at the Marines' base. The mere mention of Zoro's name caused a commotion within the restaurant. Tables flipped with shocking accuracy, sending the other patrons scurrying to the farthest wall opposite Luffy and Kobe. Perplexed and intrigued, Luffy and Kobe exchanged glances. In hushed tones, Kobe whispered, Looks like we can't just yell out the name Zoro. Collecting himself, he continued in a normal voice, I just saw a notice on the streets. There's someone called Captain Morgan at the base. As Kobe uttered the name of the Marine in charge, the effect repeated itself. The customers, consumed by panic and worry, leaped from their chairs, desperate to distance themselves from any association. Undeterred, Luffy and Kobe left the restaurant, laughter dancing in Luffy's voice as he marveled at the reactions of the townsfolk. What an interesting restaurant. I gotta go there again, he remarked, lightening the somber mood. Yet, Kobe's expression held an undercurrent of concern. That's strange. I have a bad feeling about this. I could understand why they'd be scared after hearing Roranoa Zoro's name since he could escape at any time. But why would they be afraid of a marine captain's name too? Luffy, adopting a more serious tone, replied, Well, he could have done something bad, right? In a burst of emotion, Kobe shouted, That's impossible! Undeterred by Kobe's outburst, Luffy calmly contested, I'm serious. Upon walking to the center, Luffy and Kobe stood before the imposing iron gate that guarded the marine base. It was a formidable fortress, with a high wall encircling two tall blue-striped buildings camouflaged within. Atop the main building, the word marine stood proudly, marking the significance of the place. Luffy surveyed the site before him and couldn't help but voice his opinion, it looks pretty ugly up close. His gaze shifted towards the tall border of the fortress, and he gestured towards it, saying, Go ahead, Kobe. Kobe, his hands fidgeting nervously, hesitated in response. But, but I'm not prepared yet. Besides, that incident at the restaurant got me thinking. Without a second thought, Luffy began to climb the wall, determined to find Zoro. Luffy! Kobe's voice quivered with anxiety as he called out. 
Luffy, perched atop the wall, turned to him with curiosity and said, Monster, I wonder where he is. Luffy swiftly descended from the wall and darted off to another section, eager to gain a better view of someone he had spotted within the base. Kobe, struggling to keep up, added, You can't find him that easily. He's probably being kept in a secret room or something. No, I saw something over there, Luffy insisted, running closer towards the distant figure. It could be Zoro. Motivated by Luffy's determination, Kobe climbed up the wall to join him. Look at that person, Luffy said casually. However, as soon as Kobe caught sight of Zoro's dead, silent, and evil aura, fear gripped him, and he stumbled backward, tumbling to the ground. Concerned, Luffy questioned Kobe, What's wrong? Shaking uncontrollably, Kobe managed to utter with panic, That, that, that black bandana and cloth around his waist, it, it's him, it's Roronoa Zoro, and that intimidating aura, it's Zoro. Before them, Zoro, his head hung low with blood streaming from his wounds, was heavily bound to a massive post. Luffy, unfazed, quipped from atop the wall. So he's Zoro. Looks to me those ropes are pretty easy to break. Stop! Stop joking! Kobe pleaded, his voice filled with alarm. If you free him, he could make a mess in the town and even kill you! But Luffy remained undeterred, continuing to engage with Zoro. Zoro lifted his bruised head and stared back his mouth stained with blood. Could you please come over here and untie me? I've been tied up for nine days and I'm exhausted. Observing Zoro's smile, Luffy remarked, Look, he's smiling. Still trembling with fear, Kobe stammered, He, he talked! He cowered behind the wall, desperately trying to find safety. Zoro's voice echoed, determined yet desperate. I'll repay you. I could hunt down a fugitive and give you the rewards. I'm not lying. I'll keep my word. Kobe, clutching the wall tightly, looked at Luffy with concern, his voice laden with worry. No, don't do it, Luffy. Don't be tricked by his words. If you free him, he'll kill us and escape. Luffy, never one to back down, retorted while keeping his gaze fixed on Zoro. He can't kill me, because I'm strong too. As blood continued to trickle down Zoro's face, his eyes locked with Luffy's. Terrified, Kobe could only think to himself, he... He's really hopeless. As they spoke, an unexpected figure emerged as she ascended the ladder with nimble steps. Rika, a young girl, appeared beside them. Her presence interrupted their discussion, demanding silence. Climbing over the wall, Rika paid no heed to the danger that lay before her. Kobe, his voice filled with concern, beckoned her to stop. Don't do it. It's dangerous, he warned, his eyes fixed on the perilous path she had chosen. Zoro, puzzled by the unexpected interruption, spoke up. Hey, what are you doing here? He asked, his tone laced with curiosity and a hint of irritation. Kobe, feeling a surge of responsibility, quickly turned to Luffy, pleading for assistance. Luffy, go stop her! She could get killed! He implored. Luffy, never one to shy away from a challenge, contested Kobe's request. Do it yourself, he retorted. Zoro, observing the young girl's determined approach, looked down at her with a mix of disbelief and concern. Do you want to die or something? Get lost, he exclaimed. But Rika, undeterred by Zoro's dismissive words, spoke with an air of respect. Brother, I made some rice balls for you. You haven't eaten for a long time, right? She extended her hand, revealing two perfectly shaped onigiri. This is the first time I made rice balls, she continued. Rika's eyes shimmered with hope as she offered the sustenance to the man who had gone days without nourishment. Zoro, adamant in his refusal, rejected her gesture. I'm not hungry, go away, he bellowed, his voice reflecting his hardened exterior. But Rika persisted, her determination unyielding. Zoro's harsh words did not deter her. I don't want it! Leave me! I'll kill you if you don't go! He threatened, his frustration reaching its peak. Suddenly, a group of marines emerged from the distance, marching towards Zoro with an air of arrogance. Among them was a figure that stood out, Helmeppo, the son of the marine captain in charge. Behind him, two marines were dressed in a white sailor outfit adorned with a blue tie. They sported a hat that proudly displayed the word Marine. A mocking smirk played on Helmeppo's face as he approached Zoro. Roranoa Zoro, he taunted, his voice dripping with disdain. Don't pick on little kids, or else I'll have to report it to my father about it. 
Zoro's eyes narrowed as he regarded Helmeppo's appearance. The young man was lanky, of average build, with a distinctive cleft chin and light blonde hair. His eccentric hairstyle resembled a bizarre mushroom, and his flashy leisure suit added to his overall flamboyance. Observing the scene from a safe distance, Luffy and Kobe leaned against the wall, eyeing the approaching figure. Luffy couldn't help but remark, some weirdo came. Kobe, his voice tinged with unease, replied, he must be someone important in the Marines. Thank goodness the girl is safe now. Zoro, his voice filled with regret, muttered, if it isn't the captain's bastard son. Helmeppo sneered, raising his hand to his ear in a mocking gesture. Bastard? Don't get cocky. My dad is a Marine lieutenant, he retorted. In an act of cruelty, he snatched the rice balls that a young girl named Rika had made. Well, hello, little girl, Helmeppo jeered, inspecting the rice balls. These rice balls look pretty tasty. Rika, her voice trembling, mustered the courage to protest. Stop it. Ignoring her pleas, Helmeppo took a bite of the rice ball and immediately spat it out in disgust. Horrible. You put too much sugar in it, he exclaimed, his face contorted with disgust. You're supposed to put salt in these things. Tears welled up in Rika's eyes as she innocently replied, but, but I thought they'll taste better if they're sweet. Enraged by the disrespect shown towards Rika's efforts, Kobe watched in shock as Helmeppo callously knocked the rice balls to the ground and stomped on them. How could someone eat something like this? Damn it! The captain's son exclaimed in anger. Unable to contain her anguish any longer, Rika cried out, Stop it, stop! He can't eat this anymore! Kobe, his voice filled with compassion, said to himself, That's so cruel. That girl worked so hard to make them... With a cruel smile etched on his face, Helmeppo continued his torment. Don't worry, the ants will eat them all up, he taunted, laughing as he smeared his foot with the remnants of the ruined rice balls on the floor. Rika, her tears streaming down her face, sobbed. That's so cruel. I, I tried really hard to make them. Frustration evident on his face, Helmeppo placed a hand on his head and mockingly chided her. Don't cry, it's no wonder why I hate brats so much. It's all your fault, you know. He gestured towards a wooden post nearby, displaying a law enacted by his father, Marine Captain Morgan. The law decreed, anyone who helps a prisoner will be charged with the same crime. Helmeppo stared directly at the young girl, his gaze laden with threat. You know how scary my dad can be, right? You would have gotten the death penalty if you were a grown-up. Taking pleasure in his abuse of power, Helmeppo quickly commanded one of the Marine soldiers standing behind him. Throw this brat out, he ordered. The Marine, bewildered by the callous command, hesitated for a moment. Helmeppo, his fury building, strode up to the soldier, grabbing his collar forcefully. He bellowed, I'm telling you to throw her out of here. Are you trying to disobey me? I'm telling my dad. The Marine, overcome with fear, finally shouted, I, I, sir. Without further delay, he threw Rika over the towering walls of the fortress, leaving her to rely on the quick reflexes of Luffy, who caught her safely from the other side. Kobe, filled with righteous anger, consoled the shaken girl. Are you all right? Those bastards! Luffy brushed off the incident and turned his gaze back towards the execution area, determination etched on his face. Helmeppo, satisfied with his display of power, sneered at Zoro, taunting him once again. I didn't think you'd have this kind of endurance. Zoro, unyielding in the face of adversity, responded with unwavering determination. I'm going to keep you alive for one whole month. You better keep your promise. Helmeppo laughed mockingly as he walked away, accompanied by his soldiers. I'll keep my promise. If you can live like this for one whole month, I'll keep my word and release you. Good luck. As Helmeppo disappeared from view, Zoro turned his attention to Luffy, who now stood directly in front of him. You still haven't left yet? Zoro asked, his voice laced with caution. Leave now, or else he'll go tell his dad about it. Luffy, his eyes glinting with determination, contested. Oh yeah? I'm looking for someone to join my pirate fleet. Zoro's surprise was evident in his voice as he responded. Pirate? So you just gave up on life and became a crook? Undeterred, Luffy boldly declared, It's my dream. There's nothing wrong with being a pirate. A wicked grin spread across Zoro's face as he teasingly asked, 
Don't tell me you're gonna set me free and force me to join you. Luffy smiled back, patting his straw hat, a symbol of his own aspirations. I haven't made up my mind yet. Since everyone thinks you're a bad guy, he said, his tone filled with mischief. Zoro, his own resolve unshakable, smiled back and replied, A bad guy? I'll never join you, because I have something that I need to take care of. I could survive even if you don't help me. If I can survive for a month, I'll be set free. That idiot son made a promise. I'm gonna do everything I can to stay alive and fulfill my dreams. With a hint of admiration, Luffy responded, Really? If I were you, I think I'd starve to death in a week. Zoro's determination burned fiercely as he emphasized their differences. That's why we're different. Go find someone else to join you. After their brief exchange, Luffy turned away and began walking toward the wall. But just as he was about to disappear from view, Zoro called out, halting his departure. Hey, hold on, Zoro shouted. Puzzled, Luffy looked back at him, waiting for an explanation. Zoro's request was unexpected as he asked, That, can you pick it up for me? His green hair showing as he raised his head up. Curiosity peaked, Luffy obliged, picking up the remnants of the smeared, dirt-filled rice ball from the ground. You want to eat this? But the rice ball is all muddy. Well, I guess you can't be picky about food when you're hungry, he commented, his tone tinged with surprise. Zoro, his voice commanding, interjected, Shut up! He opened his mouth wide, prepared for what was to come. Just give it to me. Let me eat all of it. Placed the food in his mouth, Zoro tried to hold it in with every bite he chewed and managed to swallow it. Hesitant, Luffy questioned, Do you want to kill yourself? With tears welling up in his eyes, Zoro swallowed his pride and replied plainly, Tell that little girl. Luffy, waiting for Zoro's request, pressed further. Tell her what? Zoro's voice, filled with honesty and gratitude, rang out. The rice balls taste very good. Thank you very much. Luffy couldn't help but burst into laughter, appreciating the unexpected show of gratitude in the midst of their dire circumstances. Later outside in the local suburbs of Shelltown, Luffy, Kobe, and Rika found a place to sit down and chat. The sun cast a warm glow on the bustling streets, a quaint town filled with colorful buildings and lively market stalls. They settled themselves on a staircase, situated in the middle of the streets. Rika listened attentively, her face lighting up with joy as Luffy described how Zoro had devoured every last bite. Yep, he ate all of it, Luffy exclaimed, his voice filled with excitement. Rika, her cheer infectious, responded with a beaming smile. I'm so happy, she exclaimed, her voice carrying a hint of admiration for Zoro. Kobe, in honesty, couldn't help but voice his doubts. Is he really that horrible person his reputation says he is? He asked, his brow furrowing with genuine curiosity. Rika shook her head vehemently, denying Kobe's comment. Brother didn't do anything wrong. It's just that the people in this town are afraid of him, she explained, her voice tinged with a mixture of frustration and affection. Memories of her past encounters with Zoro flooded her mind, and she continued, her voice softening with a hint of sadness. He got arrested because of me. He killed Helmeppo's pet wolf, Sorrow, because Helmeppo let his wolf run around and everyone got scared, Luffy interjected, trying to make sense of the situation. So you're saying that Zoro's only arrested because he killed Helmeppo's wolf, he asked, his tone incredulous. Rika nodded. You're right. So maybe he has a bad temper, but chasing down fugitives, isn't that a big crime either? Kobe comments. The girl sitting beside Luffy chimed in. The only bad guys are the Morgans. You'll get executed if you disobey them so everyone is afraid of them, she declared, her words carrying a weight of fear and defiance. As Rika finished explaining the story, suddenly, a loud outburst shattered the tranquility of the town square. Helmeppo, the son of the captain, burst into laughter, his voice dripping with superiority. Luffy's head snapped around in alarm, his eyes widening as he took in the sight before him. The citizens of the town started kneeling, creating a path for Helmeppo and his two marine companions to pass through. Helmeppo, swinging his legs from side to side with unwavering confidence, taunted the crowd. Who dares raise his head? I'll tell my dad, do you want to be like Roronoa Zoro? I'm going to publicly execute him in three days. I'll use him to set an example for all of you. It's going to be pretty interesting, he proclaimed, his voice booming with arrogance. Luffy, 
His anger simmering beneath the surface couldn't help but challenge Helmeppo. He stood up, his eyes locked on the captain's son. Three days? Didn't you say you'll give him a month? He questioned, his voice laced with defiance. The air grew tense as the citizens gasped in disbelief, their eyes shifting between Luffy and Helmeppo. The arrogant young man responded with a dismissive smirk. Who are you? How rude, he sneered, puffing his cheeks with exaggerated confidence. I was only joking with him. Only an idiot would believe that, he laughed, his words dripping with contempt. Recalling the promise Zoro had made to him, Luffy's anger flared, and without thinking, he lunged forward, grabbing Helmeppo's pink collar. Panic flickered in Luffy's eyes as he looked at Helmeppo, his voice trembling with rage. The onlookers held their breath, witnessing the confrontation unfold. In an instant, Luffy's fist connected with Helmeppo's face, the force of the punch resonating through the square. Kobe, struggling to hold Luffy back, shouted desperately, Luffy, stop, please, calm down! Luffy, his breathing heavy and his fist still clenched, glared at Helmeppo. You bastard! He spat, his voice seething with anger. Kobe, his voice tinged with urgency, warned Luffy of the consequences. You want to mess with the Marines or something? He exclaimed, his tone a mix of concern and caution. But Luffy stood firm, his resolve unyielding. With a resolute gaze, he declared, Kobe, I've decided. Kobe, taken aback by his friend's determination, questioned him, his voice filled with curiosity. Decided what? A spark of determination ignited in Luffy's eyes as he spoke his mind. I'm gonna ask Zoro to join me, he proclaimed, his voice carrying a blend of conviction and hope. The shocked townsfolk whispered in hushed voices, their expressions a mixture of fear and admiration. This, this is bad. Who is he? exclaimed one bewildered onlooker. He dared to hit the captain's son. Captain Morgan won't forgive him. Attempting to restrain the enraged Luffy, Kobe struggled to maintain a grip on his friend. Luffy, calm yourself down, they are Marines, he pleaded desperately. Disregarding Kobe's plea, Luffy discarded his signature straw hat, his eyes burning with fury. I don't care, a bastard is still a bastard, he spat, his words dripping with contempt. Meanwhile, Helmeppo, blood staining his cheeks, trembled in both pain and disbelief. You, you, you dare to hit me? My dad hasn't even hit me once, he stammered, his voice laden with indignation. Two Marine soldiers rushed to his aid, attempting to lift him from the ground. I'm Marine Captain Morgan's son. I'll tell him about this, Helmeppo bellowed aggressively, his threat hanging in the air. The terrified townsfolk recoiled in fear upon hearing the captain's son's menacing words. Challenging Helmeppo's boast, Luffy's voice echoed with defiance. Why don't you fight me yourself? Concern etched on his face. Kobe interjected with worry, Luffy, don't do this. As Helmeppo was hoisted up by the two Marine soldiers, he sneered at Luffy in defiance. You'll regret hitting me. You'll get a death sentence for it. And my dad will be the one who executes you. Bastard! With that, the trio retreated hastily seeking refuge within the safety of the marine fortress at the heart of Shelltown. Seizing the moment, Luffy retrieved his beloved straw hat from the floor. Turning to Kobe, he spoke with unwavering resolve. It's meaningless to hit people like him. Observing the fleeing trio, Kobe muttered with a mix of disappointment and relief. He ran away. Moved by Luffy's display of strength and protectiveness, Rika approached him, her eyes filled with awe. Older brother, you were so cool. Just then I was scared to death, she exclaimed, her voice trembling slightly. Luffy, caught off guard by the unexpected praise, replied with a modest smile. Really? I should have hit him a couple more times. Suddenly, Rika's mother's stern voice pierced through the air, calling her daughter back with urgency. Don't talk to strangers. You'll be executed too if you were mistaken as one of their friends. Defiantly, Rika countered her mother's warning, her faith in Luffy unyielding. Mom, he's a good person, and so is Zoro. Luffy watched this interaction unfold, his gaze shifting between the mother and daughter, recognizing the conflict between their perspectives. Don't be silly, the mother continued with worry. Did you sneak into the execution site again? Rika, undeterred, held her ground, and they both retreated into the safety of their home. As Luffy prepared to part ways with his new acquaintances, he waved a goodbye to Rika, his expression warm and friendly. 
Unbeknownst to Kobe, Luffy strode ahead with purpose, leaving his companion to exclaim with a touch of panic, Looks like we're gonna be in a lot of trouble. If the captain gets mad, he might send Marines after us. Nonchalantly, Luffy dismissed Kobe's concerns, responding with unwavering confidence. We'll deal with it when the time comes. I'm gonna go talk to Zoro. Meanwhile, in the main building of the fortified Marine base, a mysterious, strong, blonde figure sat down, his chiseled features accentuated by the curling tendrils of smoke rising from the cigarette clutched between his fingers. With a sense of self-assuredness, he gazed out the window of his dimly lit room, surveying the bustling activity within the base. I am great, he declares to himself, his voice a low, gravelly rumble that betrayed both authority and a touch of arrogance. A young Marine soldier, crisp in his uniform, entered the room and snapped to attention. Saluting his captain, he affirmed the powerful figure. Yes, because you are the captain, Captain Morgan. Captain Morgan, his eyes fixed on the horizon, allowed a hint of dissatisfaction to creep into his voice. But lately the offering seemed to be decreasing. The soldier, his brows furrowing in thought, evaluated the captain's statement carefully. That about the money for the offering. The citizens have their financial problems, too. Captain Morgan's eyes narrowed, and he turned to face the soldier, his piercing gaze cutting through the air like a blade. It's not a matter of financial problems, he declared with conviction. It's because they don't respect me. Before the soldier could respond, the door burst open with a resounding thud. Startled, both the captain and the soldier turned their attention to the intruder. Dad! A voice rang out, filled with a mix of desperation and anguish. Helmeppo, Captain Morgan's son, stumbled into the room, a handkerchief pressed against his bruised face. His eyes pleaded for solace, for an end to the torment he had endured. Captain Morgan, sighing heavily, regarded his son with a mixture of concern and weariness. What's the matter, Helmeppo? Wiping away the evidence of his pain, Helmeppo's voice trembled with pent-up rage as he made his demand. I want you to kill someone for me. The sun hung high in the sky, casting its golden rays upon the barren landscape that stretched out before Luffy. As Luffy approached the execution site for the second time, a sight caught his eye, a massive post standing tall with Zoro still bound tightly to it. The swordsman's disheveled appearance and furrowed brows spoke volumes about his frustration. It's you again? I told you I don't want to be a pirate. Zoro's voice carried a mix of irritation and desperation as he addressed Luffy, hoping his words would finally penetrate the young captain's stubborn resolve. Luffy paid no heed to Zoro's protestations, his unwavering confidence shining through. I'm Luffy. If I loosen up the ropes, then you're gonna join me, okay? His voice rang out, filled with conviction as he met Zoro's gaze head on. Zoro's eyes narrowed, his determination unwavering. I've told you clearly, he exclaimed, his teeth clenched tightly together. I have things that I need to do. Besides, I'm not going to be a bad guy like a pirate. Luffy's expression remained unyielding as he countered, his assurance unshaken. Why do you care? Everyone already thinks you are a bad guy, he stated matter-of-factly, challenging Zoro to reconsider his stance. A deadly focus emanated from Zoro as he locked eyes with Luffy, his voice cutting through the air. I don't care what they say about me. I haven't done one thing that I regretted in the past, and it will be the same for the future. I won't become a pirate. A brief silence hung in the air, broken only by the sound of their breaths. Luffy's gaze remained fixed upon Zoro, contemplating his next move. Then, in a sudden and decisive motion, he turned his head away, breaking their eye contact. I don't care, you are going to join me, Luffy declared, determination resonating in his words as he reaffirmed his unwavering resolve. Don't decide for yourself, Zoro shouted in frustration and defiance. Undeterred, Luffy turned back around to face Zoro, a mischievous glint in his eyes. Hey, I heard that you use a katana, is that right? He asked, curiosity lacing his words. Zoro pondered for a moment, weighing his response carefully. If I'm not being tied up, I could use a katana, he reluctantly admitted, the hint of longing in his voice revealing his deep connection to his treasured weapon. A spark of excitement ignited within Luffy as he delved further into the conversation. Where is your katana now? 
he inquired, eager to understand the circumstances surrounding its absence. A hint of sorrow tinged Zoro's voice as he replied, That bastard took it. It's something that I treasure most, other than my life. Luffy's eyes widened with intrigue. Oh? Treasure, huh? It must be something great, he mused. Determination flickered across his features once again. Okay, I'm gonna go to where the bastard kid is and get your katana back. Zoro's confusion was palpable as he struggled to comprehend Luffy's motivations. But if you want me to return it to you, you'll have to join me. Luffy chuckled, his proposition veiled beneath a playful demeanor. That's dirty! Zoro's shout reverberated through the air. He attempted to interject, but Luffy was already bounding away, his footsteps echoing as he sprinted towards the main building of the marine base. Left alone at the execution site, Zoro muttered to himself, his voice laced with disbelief. Is he planning on sneaking into the base? What a fool. On the rooftop of the imposing Marines building, Morgan, a towering figure with a chiseled physique, barks out commands to his soldiers. Okay, stop. Lift the statue. Ropes are attached to a stone statue of Morgan, now being hoisted with collective effort. The statue, a tribute to his own greatness, slowly ascends. Among the soldiers stands Helmeppo, a bruise adorning his eye, still seeking his father's intervention in a personal vendetta. Dad, that kid hit me. Why won't you help me take revenge? Even you haven't hit me before, he implores, desperation lacing his voice. Captain Morgan, puffing on his cigar, exhales a cloud of smoke and retorts, his voice steeped in authority. Do you know why I never hit you? A pause hangs in the air as tension builds. Helmeppo's voice trembles as he musters a response, his plea filled with longing. Yes, because I'm your- Interrupting his son's words, Morgan scoffs at the notion. Yes, because you are- And then delivers a resounding blow to Helmeppo's face with a thunderous clash from his left hand. The punch reverberates through the rooftop, emphasizing his disdain. A bastard son that's not worth hitting! Captain Morgan cuts an imposing figure, his tall stature enhanced by a tanned complexion and blonde hair. His face bears the marks of strength and determination, with a prominent steel jaw etched with the word Mo, meaning seagull, adorned with a marine logo. His right hand has been replaced by a massive steel axe, its handle bolted through the bones of his forearm, jutting out in place of his elbow. Maintaining an air of calm, Morgan questions the essence of their relationship. Why do I have to clean up your mess? You can do a lot of things in my name, but I only punish those who oppose me. With a cigar clenched firmly between his teeth, Axe Hand Morgan tilts his head towards his tear-stricken son. Don't misunderstand. You are not the great one here. It's your father, me, he proclaims with an air of self-assuredness. With purposeful strides, Morgan begins to walk away, his voice trailing behind him. Rumor says a little mouse sneaked into the execution site. Is it true? Helmeppo hesitates, grappling with his response before finally admitting, Oh, you mean that little girl? I've already... His father's deadly stare halts his words in their tracks. Captain Morgan's gaze bores into Helmeppo's soul as he questions, You killed her, right? With a trembling voice, Helmeppo replies, still clinging to a shred of humanity. No, she... she's still a little girl. She didn't even realize her mistake. Captain Morgan's cold gaze shifts, directing his attention towards one of the Marine officers named Rokaku. He calls out, his voice laced with authority. Hey you, go into town and kill her. Shocked, they questioned their command. He continues, I don't care how old she is, whoever opposes me will die. The lieutenant's face stammers as he tries to find a response. But, but Captain, she's just a little girl. I couldn't do that to her. Morgan's tone brooks no dissent as he asserts his dominance. Couldn't do it, huh? You are a Marine captain, right? And the rank of lieutenant junior grade is lower than the rank of captain, isn't it? The lieutenant reluctantly concedes, his voice filled with resignation. Yes, sir. In a display of unwavering power, Captain Morgan proclaims with a threatening aura, In that case, you have no right to go against my order. If I order you to go, then you will go. Defiance sparks in the Marine's eyes as he musters the courage to respond, I can't! The captain's steel axe hand strikes swiftly, slashing through the air, severing the lieutenant's back. 
A cry of, you traitor, echoes through the rooftop, piercing the hearts of Helmeppo and the Marines. They shrink back in fear, their loyalty shaken by the ferocity of their captain. You didn't have to do that, his son comments, while the other soldiers cry out for their captain who is lying on the floor. Captain Morgan, blood dripping from his axe hand, smirks as he delivers a chilling reminder. Never mind, for the sake of reminding the citizens, I'll go there myself. With each step he takes, the weight of his rank and authority reverberates through the air. The captain's words cut through the silence, laden with conviction. With this arm, I rose to the rank of captain. Rank is the most important thing in the world. I am the highest ranking officer in this base, which means I'm the greatest one here. Gazing fiercely at his men, Captain Morgan demands their agreement. Great men don't make mistakes. Do you all agree? Without hesitation, the Marine soldiers salute, their voices ringing out in unison, confirming the unquestionable truth. Yes, sir, you are absolutely correct, Captain. Emboldened by their support, Captain Morgan directs the soldiers to pull the heavy stone statue, symbolizing his power, to its rightful place. His voice booms across the rooftop, filled with authority. Look, this is a symbol of my power, a statue that has been finished today after years of work. Now stand up, my great statue, at the highest point of this base. On ground level, the bustling marine base loomed with its two towering blue buildings. Luffy stood perplexed before them, scratching his head in bewilderment. That's strange, he muttered, his gaze sweeping the area. There aren't any Marines around. His hand instinctively found its way to his beloved straw hat, which he stroked absentmindedly. Are they having a meeting or something? Never mind the katana, I can't even find that idiot son like this. Amidst the curious silence, a distant chant reverberated through the air. Pull! Pull! The repetitive shouts echoed as the Marines engaged in pulling the giant stone statue of Captain Morgan. Seaman recruit Ukari, caught up in the fervor, accidentally knocked a portion of the statue against the building's roof. The sound caught the attention of Captain Axe Hand Morgan, who swiftly turned to face the young Marine. Hey, hold on a second. Just now you damaged my statue, he bellowed, his voice laced with anger. Ukari stammered in worry, his face etched with fear. Sorry, sorry, Captain, I was being careless, he apologized, his voice trembling. The sound of commotion overhead caught his attention, and he looked up, noticing movement on the roof. There seems to be people up there, he observed, his tone tinged with surprise. Luffy, his curiosity piqued, pulled his arm back and declared, let's go up and see. With a burst of energy, he stretched his right hand to the edge of the roof with incredible force. Gripping it tightly, he shouted in exhilaration, Gomu, Gomu, no, rocket! And in a daring leap, he propelled himself forward, his feet leaving the ground as he shot towards the roof with lightning speed like a giant slingshot. Captain Morgan's face contorted with rage. Do you know how long I've been looking forward to the completion of this statue? And you went ahead and damaged it, he seethed, his voice filled with fierce ferocity. The Marine, desperate to rectify his mistake, pleaded, I'm sorry, I'll go fix it right away. With his ax held menacingly, Captain Morgan's eyes blazed with fury as he delivered a chilling ultimatum. This statue represents me. Damaging it means that you don't respect me. You got it? Just as the Marine was about to face the consequences of his actions, Luffy soared through the air, his panicked voice ringing out. Oh no, I'm going too fast, he exclaimed, realizing the perilous speed at which he was hurtling towards the Marines. The soldiers, astonished by the sudden appearance of this mysterious flying figure, exclaimed in disbelief. What is that? Something flew up from down there? Stopped at last. Luffy sighed as he grabbed hold of the ropes the Marines were pulling. The force caused the soldiers to lose their balance, pulling them off the tiled floor. The heavy stone statue teetered dangerously before succumbing to gravity and crashing against the railing of the roof. The Marines watched in horror as their prized statue shattered, its remains scattered on the ground below. Unfazed by the destruction he had caused, Luffy observed the broken pieces and offered a sincere apology, putting his hand up. Sorry, he said, his voice filled with genuine remorse. Captain Morgan's fury reached its peak. Capture him! I'm gonna kill him, 
he roared, his desire for vengeance consuming him. The marine soldiers swiftly confirmed their orders, and Helmeppo, seizing the opportunity, pointed at Luffy. Dad, it's him! He's the one who hit me! I told you he's no good! Luffy, holding on to Helmeppo, whisked him away, his voice resolute. I've been looking for you, he compelled, determined to resolve the situation. Helmeppo, struggling to free himself, cried out for help. Let me go! Dad, help! Help me! Together, Luffy made his escape through the roof door. The Marines, undeterred by the chaos, shouted in unison, They, they headed into the main building, after them! Their voices echoed through the corridors as they set off in hot pursuit. Meanwhile, amidst the turmoil, one of the Marines spotted something alarming below. Captain, someone's at the execution site, he called out, his voice laced with urgency. Morgan, his paranoia and aggression heightened, barked his orders with unwavering ferocity. What? Another traitor? Have them all killed! At the execution site, Kobe stood before the bound figure of Zoro. Concern etched across his face, he relayed the startling information he had just received. What? Luffy is inside the base? He's too hot-headed! Kobe's voice trailed off, his worry palpable. Zoro, his eyes fixed on Kobe, confirmed the news with a solemn nod. Yeah, you're right. Anyway, who is he? He replied. If you help me, they are going to kill you. Kobe remarked as he quickly tried to untie him. You shouldn't be arrested. I can't stand those kinds of Marines, he exclaimed, refusing to heed Zoro's warning. I'm going to become a real Marine, just like the way Luffy is determined to become the Pirate King. Zoro, taken aback by Luffy's lofty ambition, couldn't help but react with surprise. What? Pirate King? You're joking, right? He questioned incredulously. Kobe laughed off Zoro's skepticism, continuing with unwavering conviction. I was a bit shocked when I first heard him, but he's serious. His words hung in the air, resonating with a sense of unyielding determination. Suddenly, without warning, a shot rang out, piercing the air. Kobe's body crumpled to the ground, his eyes wide with shock and disbelief. Captain Morgan, gazing down from above, watched as Kobe's lifeless form fell to the floor, his face an eerie mask of cold indifference. The sight of Kobe's demise ignited a fierce rage within Zoro. His gaze turned threateningly towards the roof of the marine base, his resolve hardened. Something had to be done. Inside the marine building, the clamor of soldiers grew louder as Luffy and Helmeppo raced through the hallways. Ignoring the marines' futile commands to stop, Luffy held Helmeppo firmly, his voice urgent. Where's Zoro's katana? He demanded, determined to retrieve it. Helmeppo, caught off guard, stumbled for a moment before succumbing to Luffy's persistence. I'll tell, I'll tell, just stop dragging me, he pleaded, hoping to end the ordeal. Luffy's footsteps echoed through the dimly lit corridors of the marine base, his grip firm on Helmeppo's shirt as he dragged him along. The air was thick with tension, a mix of anticipation and urgency. The walls seemed to close in on them, bearing witness to their chaotic pursuit. Hurry up and tell me where Zoro's swords are! Luffy's voice echoed through the desolate halls, his demand dripping with impatience. Helmeppo, his face pale and sweat glistening on his forehead, could barely catch his breath. I'll... I'll tell you! Just stop dragging me! Helmeppo's cry came out in desperate gasps as he struggled to keep up with Luffy's relentless pace. Finally, Luffy slowed down, giving Helmeppo a brief respite. His eyes narrowed, and a touch of annoyance crept into his voice. Okay, spill it! Panting heavily, Helmeppo managed to find his voice amidst the exhaustion. They're inside my room. We... we already walked past it. Irritation danced across Luffy's face, and without hesitation he swung his fist, connecting with Helmeppo's cheek. Why didn't you say so earlier? The blow sent Helmeppo stumbling backward, his hand pressed against his throbbing cheek. That hurts! Don't hit me! But Luffy's attention was momentarily diverted. As he turned to face the disgruntled captain's son, he found himself confronted by three imposing marine soldiers, their arms outstretched, their stern faces filled with authority. Don't move! Raise your hands above your head! Their command echoed through the corridor, filling the air with a sense of imminent danger. Luffy, however, remained unfazed. No, 
Luffy casually said as his head directed at the Marine soldiers, he weighed his options for a split second. In a blank expression, he grabbed Helmeppo by the shoulders and positioned him as a human shield. The panic in Helmeppo's eyes intensified as Luffy dashed forward, his confidence unshakable. Go ahead and shoot, Helmeppo declared. The pursuing Marines found themselves caught in a quandary, unable to move for fear of harming the captain's son. Helplessly, they watched as Luffy vanished into the distance with Helmeppo screaming for his life, leaving them in a state of paralyzed frustration. Meanwhile, at the desolate execution site, a chill wind whispered through the air, carrying a sense of impending doom. Kobe, his face contorted in agony, stared at his trembling hand. The once vibrant red had given way to a sickly crimson, tainted with the evidence of his impending demise. Tears streamed down his dirt-streaked face as he cried out in despair, his voice carrying the weight of a thousand sorrows. I've been shot! Kobe's voice cracked with anguish, his words hanging heavy in the air. Bleeding, I'm bleeding, I'm gonna die! Zoro, his gaze piercing the gloom, turned to face Kobe, concern etching deep lines on his brow. Are you all right? He asked, his voice laced with worry. Run for your life, they're almost here. Gasping for breath, Kobe clutched his wounded shoulder, his panting punctuating the silence that engulfed them. Determination gleamed in his eyes as he shook his head in defiance. No, I've got to set you free as soon as possible. Zoro reached out. There is no need to worry about me. As long as I can endure this torment for a month, they'll release me. Hurry and... Lee. His hand poised to offer solace, but Kobe's urgent words halted his movement. Interrupting him with a sense of urgency, Kobe's voice quivered with a mix of fear and conviction. They will not set you free because they're going to kill you in three days. Zoro spat in disbelief, his voice tinged with anger. Nonsense! That bastard promised me that if I could survive this for a month, he'd free me. Adjusting his glasses, Kobe's breaths came in ragged bursts as he continued his desperate plea. He never intended to keep his promise. That's why Luffy punched him on your behalf, because he was toying with you. Zoro's eyes widened. In astonishment, his disbelief swiftly morphed into a profound understanding of the truth. What did you just say? Kobe's voice grew more urgent, his glasses gleaming in the fading light. The Marines will never let the two of you off. Please, after I set you free, please help rescue Luffy. I will not force you to become a pirate. However, he's my savior. Luffy is very strong. As long as you two join forces, you all will definitely be able to escape this town. Definitely. Suddenly, the air crackled with tension as a detachment of Marines closed in on Zoro and Kobe. Their weapons glinted ominously, poised for the kill. The soldiers' voices rang out, their words laced with deadly intent. That's enough. The two of you who have betrayed Captain Morgan, die here. Kobe and Zoro exchanged a stunned glance, their eyes mirroring the disbelief that filled their hearts. In this treacherous moment, survival seemed like an impossible dream, and their fates hung in the balance. Is this the room? Luffy questions as he bursts through the door, dragging Helmeppo along with him. It is a vibrant pink room with the walls adorned with stylish decorations, each carefully chosen to enhance the room's aesthetic appeal. A mahogany desk stood at the center, displaying an array of fancy accessories that added an air of elegance to the space. On one side, a full plate of gleaming body armor sat proudly, while an intricately designed helmet and four swords hung in perfect symmetry behind it. Against the opposite wall, three sleek katanas rested, their blades reflecting the soft glow of sunlight that streamed through a nearby window. Inquisitively, Luffy pointed his finger towards the trio of swords and turned to Helmeppo, seeking answers. All right, found the katana, but there are three katanas here. Which one belongs to Zoro? He questioned, anticipation filling his voice. Yet his gaze shifted to Helmeppo, only to find his eyes unfocused, his expression dazed. A peculiar sight met Luffy's eyes as foam bubbled at the corner of Helmeppo's mouth. What's wrong? Did you faint? Luffy asked, concern lacing his words. Noticing a window nearby, Luffy's curiosity peaked, and he approached it, his hands pressing against the cool glass pane. Suddenly, his eyes widened with surprise as he caught sight of Kobe amidst the chaos outside at the execution site. Captain Axe Hand Morgan strode onto the execution site, 
barking orders to surround the area, his voice booming with authority. Surround the base! Don't let the guy with the straw hat escape! The Marine soldiers obediently formed a barrier, their weapons at the ready. Captain Morgan's formidable presence emanated from the powerful swing of his axe hand, held high above his head. With an intimidating gaze fixed on his adversaries, he addressed the duo defiantly, his voice laced with disdain. How interesting. The three of you are planning to cause political upheaval? Roranoa Zoro. I've heard of your name from a long time ago, but do not underestimate me. Before my great strength, you're just garbage. The weight of his words hung in the air, heavy with the impending threat. The tension grew palpable as Captain Morgan commanded his soldiers, their guns now pointed directly at the duo, ready. Amidst the mounting pressure, Kobe's voice wavered, tears welling up in his eyes. Zoro, aware of the imminent danger that loomed, felt a surge of determination within him. I... I can't die here. I still have things I need to settle, he silently vowed, his mind racing with memories of his youth and the reasons that had forged him into the person he had become. Because I made a promise. Nine years ago, the training dojo hummed with anticipation. The air crackled with the energy of young warriors honing their skills. In the center of it all, a young Zoro lay defeated on the ground, his wooden swords scattered around him. Standing triumphant over him was a figure similar in age, but holding only a single wooden sword. The teacher's voice pierced through the dojo, declaring the winner. Queena wins! Zoro, who used double swords, loses! The teacher announced. Kina, with her short dark blue hair and piercing dark eyes, exuded confidence. Her attire, a light pink short-sleeved shirt with an unbuttoned placket, dark maroon shorts and brown shoes, matched her determination. Gasping for breath, Kina huffed, how pitiful, a boy and so useless. But Zoro's fellow students rallied behind him, standing up for their fallen comrade. Hey, Zoro isn't weak, they exclaimed. Yeah, Zoro is the best in our dojo. Even when sparring with adults, he is still very good. Undeterred, Kina walked off mockingly, clutching her practice sword. Is that so? Still, he is weaker than me, she taunted. Even if he uses two swords, he is still useless. Admit defeat since you've lost. Zoro's frustration boiled within him as he watched her retreat, while the others accused her boldly, condemning her for her arrogance. You fiend, Queena! This woman really makes one angry. Just because she's the daughter of the dojo's sensei, she likes to show off. Amidst the brewing tension, another figure entered the conversation. This young man, with black hair tied back in a long ponytail and circular framed glasses, wore the same black uniform as Zoro and the other students. A smile played on his lips as he addressed Zoro. You lost again, he teased. What a pity, Zoro. Sensei, the students remarked, now suspicious, confronted their sensei. Don't lie to us, sensei. You've been secretly training her because she's your daughter, right? They accused. Apprehensive, the master raised his hand, trying to dispel the rumors. No, no such thing, he assured them. Unable to contain his frustration any longer, Zoro slammed his wooden swords to the ground and shouted, Damn, why can't I defeat her? But the sensei, ever calm, responded with wisdom. But Zoro, Kina is older than you, he explained. Yet Zoro's anger only intensified as he bellowed, even adults can't beat me. I want to sail and become the world's number one swordsman. I won't lose to anyone ever again. Under the cover of a dark blue sky, the full moon hung high, casting an ethereal glow upon the training grounds. Kina's relentless strikes reverberated through the air as she relentlessly assaulted a sturdy wooden post. The young warrior's face glistened with sweat, beads of determination cascading down her brow. In the midst of her solitary practice, the rhythmic footsteps of an approaching figure disrupted the tranquility. Frustration etched upon his face. Zoro, a determined and spirited youth, stood firm before Queena, issuing a bold challenge that resonated through the night. Queena, duel with me using real katanas, he boomed, a fire burning in his eyes. I have brought genuine blades for our clash. Unyielding and ready for the challenge, Kina accepted, her resolve unwavering. They positioned themselves on a flat plain adjacent to the training dojo, a momentary calm prevailing as a gentle breeze whispered through the grassy expanse. Zoro firmly grasped two authentic katanas, his stance unwavering. 
Let's go, he declared, his voice carrying a hint of both anticipation and determination. On the opposite end, Kina stood resolute, her hands clenching the katana tightly. Come on, she countered, her voice laced with determination. As the anticipation mounted, both combatants lunged forward, their katanas colliding with resounding ferocity. The clash of their blades reverberated through the night, the sheer force of their duel resonating in the air. In a swift, unforeseen maneuver, Kina caught Zoro off guard, sending his katana spiraling through the air. The impact sent him crashing to the ground, temporarily defeated. With lightning speed, Kina pinned her katana dangerously close to Zoro's head, securing her victory. A triumphant smile danced upon her lips as she proclaimed, My 2000 first victory! With his arm shielding his eyes, Zoro lay on the ground, his frustration palpable. Damn it! I can't believe this! He cried out in defeat. In a hushed tone, Kina's voice softened. Actually, the one who should feel upset is me. Silence enveloped the scene as Zoro absorbed her words. Sitting down on the dojo's porch, Kina continued, her tears beginning to flow. When a girl grows up, she will lose out to guys in physical strength. I'm going to fall you people soon. Don't you always say that? You want to become the world's number one swordsman? Papa says that girls will never be the world's number one. Zoro watched as Kina's tears fell, his heart heavy with understanding. It's a good thing you're a guy. I want to be the best in the world, too. She leaned forward, her hands gripping her chest. My body has started to develop. If only I were a guy. Interrupting her heartfelt speech, Zoro's voice cut through the air. You're telling me all this crap after you beat me? That's unfair. To become like you is my ambition. Kina's gaze shifted toward him, her eyes filled with compassion. Zoro's frustration spilled out as he shouted, Does this mean that if I beat you one day, it is not because of my strength? Doesn't this make me who has been training extremely hard to beat you look like an idiot? With both swords raised high, Zoro boldly declared, Let's make a promise. One of us will become the world's greatest swordsman. Let's see who can reach that goal first. Brushing away her tears with determination, Kina happily remarked, Stupid. You are a person who lost to me. Clasping each other's hands tightly, they made a solemn agreement to strive towards becoming the greatest swordsman in the world. I promise you. The following morning, a piercing cry echoed through the corridors of the dojo, shattering the serenity. Zoro's world crumbled as the devastating news reached his ears. Oh no, Zoro, something terrible has happened. Kina, she, she fell down the stairs and died. Zoro's face contorted with grief, his spirit shaken to the core. In that moment, an intense silence filled the air as he grappled with his emotions. He cast his eyes upon the lifeless figure of Quina, her face concealed by a white cloth, her once vibrant spirit forever stilled. Unleashing a torrent of anger and sadness, Zoro's voice reverberated through the dojo. You bastard! Both of us made a promise last night, and now you're running away? One of his masters, a sage and composed presence, intervened with a gentle tone. Zoro, please don't be like this. Humans are really fragile beings, Zoro. Kneeling before his sensei, Quina's father, head bowed in mourning, Zoro made a desperate plea. Sensei, please gift me with her sword. The master met his gaze, his eyes filled with sorrowful understanding. Succumbing to Zoro's impassioned request, he agreed to bestow Quina's sword upon him. With tears streaming down his face, Zoro clutched Kina's white katana with both hands, his voice resolute. I will be even more greater. I will become the world's number one swordsman, so famous that even heaven will hear of my great name. Back in the present, Zoro clung desperately to life, his mind racing with determination. I made a promise. I cannot die here. His grip tightened around the last threads of hope, as the weight of impending doom bore down on him. The Marines, resolute in their duty, trained their sights on Zoro and Kobe, their fingers twitching on the triggers. The tension in the air was palpable as silence settled over the scene, broken only by the sound of hearts pounding and breaths held in anticipation. Meanwhile, Luffy, with unwavering resolve, braced himself at the edge of the window. His eyes glimmered with determination as he tightly clenched the window's edge, 
preparing to launch himself into action while stretching his body back as hard as he can. Gomu, Gomu, no, he declared. In one swift motion, Luffy propelled himself forward, shattering the glass window with an explosive force. Rocket, he bellowed, soaring through the sky with unparalleled audacity. His body became a projectile hurtling towards the heart of the danger. Captain Morgan, a formidable figure with a jaw like steel, barked his command to the Marine soldiers under his command. Fire! The air filled with the deafening roar of rifles as a barrage of bullets surged towards the oncoming threat. Luffy, propelled by his unwavering spirit, dashed straight towards the execution site. In a flash, he landed in front of Zoro and Kobe, positioning himself as a shield against the onslaught of bullets. Each projectile tore through his body, elasticizing his flesh, yet he stood firm. Shock and disbelief gripped the scene as the onlookers watched the bullets find their mark, only to be repelled as if by an unseen force. The metallic rain ricocheted harmlessly off Luffy's unyielding form, leaving him unscathed as everyone concentrated their sights on the straw-hatted boy. With both arms raised triumphantly, Luffy shouted with unwavering confidence, his voice echoing through the stunned crowd. It's no use! The words hung in the air, defying all logic and expectation. Those witnessing the spectacle could only watch in utter surprise. Having endured the onslaught, Luffy let out a hearty laugh, defying the pain that coursed through his veins. Zoro, his voice laced with incredulity, challenged the extraordinary being before him. What kind of human are you? He demanded, struggling to comprehend the impossible. Meanwhile, Kobe, weakened and incapacitated, fell to the ground, foam spilling from his mouth. His eyes fixated on the extraordinary scene unfolding before him, disbelief mingling with awe. Luffy cast a smug smirk over his shoulder, meeting Zoro's gaze. I am the one who will become the Pirate King. His words carried the weight of unyielding determination, a declaration that resonated with both defiance and ambition. In an unexpected twist, Luffy revealed three swords he had discovered in Helmeppo's room. He presented them to Zoro, an offering to solidify their newfound bond. Look, which one is your treasured katana? He asked, his voice tinged with curiosity and camaraderie. I couldn't figure it out, so I brought all three of them. Zoro, still bound to the post, responded with a distant gaze, his eyes hollow. All three belong to me because I use three katanas, he stated. As the weight of their decision settled upon them, the entry point at the execution site closed, sealing their fate. A legion of marine soldiers surrounded the intruders, their collective presence overwhelming and inescapable. Undeterred by their predicament, Luffy continued his conversation with Zoro, his voice carrying a mix of warning and camaraderie. Resisting the marines here together with me will make you an outlaw. Or maybe you want to die here, he questioned his words dripping with the gravity of their circumstances. Zoro, in a moment of realization, spoke with resignation and determination. Are you the offspring of the devil? Forget it. Rather than just dying here, why don't I accede to your request and become a pirate? He proclaimed, choosing a path fraught with danger over certain death. Raising both of his hands in the air, Luffy's triumphant cry reverberated through the air, his face adorned with a joyful smile. Yes, I have a companion, he exclaimed, his excitement palpable. Zoro, still bound tightly to the post, couldn't help but respond, his voice laced with urgency. Okay, hurry and get these ropes off of me. The marine soldiers, clad in their navy uniforms, stood in bewildered awe. Shocked that Luffy remained unscathed after that relentless barrage of bullets, they exchanged incredulous glances. That guy! How in the world? How did he manage to repel those bullets? They murmured to themselves, their confusion growing. Captain Morgan, his patience waning, growled at his men. That rascal isn't normal. He must have eaten one of the devil fruits. Panic surged among the soldiers as they realized the implications. Their voices trembled with fear. He ate the ocean's secret treasure? Then his special ability is due to this devil fruit? The room buzzed with frantic chatter, each soldier grappling with the magnitude of the situation. Meanwhile, Luffy focused his attention on freeing Zoro from his restraints. Desperation echoed in his voice as he called out to his captain. 
Captain, that guy's gonna take off Zorro's ropes. Don't let him take them off, Captain Morgan commanded. If guns don't work, then we'll use swords to kill him, as the Marine soldiers dashed towards them with their swords in hand. Luffy's nimble fingers wrestled with the stubborn knot, his determination unwavering. Sweat trickled down his forehead as he grappled with the intricate bindings. Damn, this knot is so hard to untie. How do I open this? He muttered, his frustration evident. Zoro's voice, filled with urgency, broke through the tense atmosphere. Hurry up! The gravity of the situation weighed heavily on his words, driving Luffy to quicken his pace. Amidst the chaos, a figure stirred. Kobe, who had fainted moments earlier when Luffy was shot, regained consciousness. His disoriented mind struggled to piece together the events. Did I faint? What happened? He wondered aloud, his voice tinged with bewilderment. But his confusion was short-lived, for as he rose to his feet, his eyes widened in terror. The sight of the marines charging towards Luffy and Zoro sent a surge of adrenaline coursing through his veins. Luffy, Zoro, watch out! He screamed, his warning echoing through the air. Luffy turned his head, acknowledging Kobe's presence, but his focus remained fixed on the task at hand. I can't concentrate. Give me some time, he muttered, the strain evident in his voice. We don't have time for you, take your time, Zoro barked, his urgency transforming into frustration. Ignoring the impending danger, Luffy's eyes gleamed with satisfaction as he managed to undo the rope. Oh, I untied one side, he exclaimed, eager for Zoro to witness his progress. But Zoro's demand rang louder. Idiot, hurry, get me my swords. With each passing moment, the marine soldiers drew closer, their swords gleaming ominously in the dimly lit room. Captain Morgan, his voice filled with malicious intent, issued his final command. All who oppose me must perish. The swords arced through the air, their trajectory aimed unyieldingly towards Zoro. The sun-drenched battlefield fell into a sudden silence as the clash of swords reverberated through the air. Zoro, the indomitable swordsman, stood at the center of the conflict, his two katanas forming an imposing X, while a third blade was held firmly between his teeth. The marines, their blades locked in Zoro's grip, found themselves immobilized, their faces full of with surprise and trepidation. In the midst of the tense standoff, Luffy, his unwavering grip on the rope, couldn't contain his excitement. Oh, cool, he exclaimed, his eyes gleaming with delight. Blood trickled down Zoro's face, but it only intensified the menacing aura that surrounded him. With a deadly voice, he issued a chilling warning. All of you better not move. You move, and I'll kill you. The Marines, their swords futilely deflected by Zoro's formidable skill, trembled in fear at the sheer terror he exuded. Zoro maintained his three-sword stance, his unwavering gaze fixed on Luffy. I already told you I'd be a pirate with you, he declared. Either way, after this incident with the Marines, I'll be an outlaw too. But it's okay. I still have my own goals. Luffy listened intently, hanging on to Zoro's words. Zoro continued, his voice bolder than ever before. I'm going to become the world's greatest swordsman. I no longer care if my name is clean or not. Bad guy or good guy, it no longer matters. As long as my name is known worldwide. If you do something that ends up in the way of my goal, I will have you cut your stomach open to say sorry. Luffy's face lit up with a joyful expression. Good! To be the world's number one swordsman! Since you want to be the Pirate King's crew member, if you can't even accomplish something that small, then I would be very embarrassed as well, he remarked. Zoro chuckled, his mouth still gripping the hilt of his white katana. Well said! Captain Morgan's booming voice shattered the momentary stillness. He barked orders at his men, demanding their immediate engagement. What are you guys standing there for? Hurry up and finish those two off! His tone carried a mix of concern and anxiety. Luffy, his leg poised for action, signaled Zoro to duck. As Zoro complied, Luffy announced with anticipation, Gomu Gomu, no! His leg extended as it collided hard against the stomachs of the soldiers who were locked in combat with Zoro. Whip! They were sent flying backward as if struck by a giant whip, propelled by Luffy's rubbery appendage. Even Captain Morgan himself stood in shock, witnessing the raw power of the duo. Kobe, his face beaming with excitement, couldn't contain his enthusiasm. Super, very cool, he exclaimed, marveling at the unexpected turn of events. Zoro, perplexed, questioned his captain. 
What are you? Luffy turned his attention to Zoro, drawing his foot back. I am a rubber man, he joyfully proclaimed, his voice resonating with exhilaration. The defeated Marines, sprawled on the ground, groaned in agony. Rubber man, Captain, we can't defeat these two. They're too strong. Any, anyways, we can't defeat Zoro. Their voices were laced with defeat and despair. Zoro and Luffy stood tall, ready for whatever came next. Captain Morgan, his rage reaching its zenith, issued a chilling command to his subordinates. This is an order. Whoever just said that, get a gun and kill yourself. A collective gasp filled the air as the Marines absorbed the weight of their captain's words. Their faces paled, realizing the gravity of the situation. Morgan continued his merciless decree, his gaze piercing through their souls. I don't need useless soldiers, that's an order. The Marine soldiers, their trembling hands clutching their rifles, faced an unthinkable choice as they point their guns directly at their heads. Luffy, Zoro, and Kobe observed the scene unfold, their eyes widening in disbelief. Zoro tightened his grip on his swords, fury simmering within him. What the hell do these dumb Marines think they're doing? He muttered under his breath. Without hesitation, Luffy dashed toward Captain Morgan. Charging his fist, he confronted the Marine captain with unwavering resolve. I am the Marine's worst enemy. If you have the guts, then execute me. However, Captain Morgan's heavy steel axe arm intercepted Luffy's punch, blocking the attack effortlessly. The onlookers watched with bated breath, eager to witness the outcome of this climactic clash. Kobe, his voice strained with urgency, shouted out to his friend, Luffy, defeat these Marines! Captain Axe Hand Morgan discarded his coat, revealing a black singlet clinging to his muscular tanned chest. His voice reverberated with authority as he charged toward Luffy, pronouncing his identity. People like you without status have no right to oppose me. I am Marine Captain Axe Hand Morgan. Luffy met Morgan's gaze, his expression honest and resolute. My name is Luffy. Nice to meet you, he replied calmly, defiance radiating from his every pore. Go to hell, Captain Morgan bellowed as he swung his giant axe hand at Luffy, the force behind it enough to cleave through stone. Luffy's instincts kicked in, and he leaped into the air, holding his cherished straw hat close. In a swift motion, he sliced the fence of the execution site cleanly in half, leaving everyone astounded. What? The fence broke in half just like that! Kobe exclaimed, his worry evident in his voice. The air crackled with anticipation as the battle raged on. Luffy, the indomitable pirate still in the air, propelled his powerful legs towards Captain Morgan. With a thunderous slam, he connected with the metallic jaw of his adversary, sending him crashing to the ground. The onlooking Marine soldiers stood in awe, their eyes wide with disbelief. Captain, he... one of them began, but Morgan defied expectations, rising to his feet and mocking Luffy with a sneer. You little bastard, he spat. Undeterred by Morgan's bravado, Luffy prepared for another assault. He darted forward with lightning speed while the Marine captain readied his axe hand, poised for another strike. Go to hell, Morgan bellowed as he brought his hand crashing down. Yet Luffy's agility saved him as he twirled and dodged the attack, a mischievous grin playing on his face. I'm not dead yet. Seizing the opportunity, he delivered a swift kick to Morgan's face, causing him to plummet to the ground once more. Kobe and the other Marines watched on, their admiration mingled with astonishment. Too, too strong, Kobe stammered, his voice filled with surprise. The Marines whispered amongst themselves, astounded by the sight before them. Captain Morgan can only be kicked around, they murmured in hushed tones. With a firm grip on Morgan's singlet, Luffy tightened his fist, readying himself for a punch that would surely end this battle. Some great Marine you are, destroyed Kobe's dreams and goal. But just as he prepared to strike, a voice cut through the air, commanding attention. Both Luffy and Zoro, his loyal comrade, turned their gaze toward the source of the interruption. Ignoring the plea, Luffy launched his attack, his fist hurtling toward Morgan. The moment seemed inevitable, until Helmeppo, the captain's son, cried out in frustration. Wait! He shouted, desperation evident in his voice. Helmeppo's warning fell on deaf ears as Luffy's fist connected with Morgan's face, a resounding impact that reverberated through the battlefield.
Yet the tense situation took a perilous turn as Helmeppo, his blonde, mushroom-shaped hair standing out, his voice laced with urgency, he threatened, If you want this guy to survive, then don't move. If anyone moves, I'll shoot, as he raised a gun and aimed it directly at Kobe's head. Panic gripped the Marines, their faces etched with fear at the captain's son's desperate act. In the face of imminent danger, Kobe's bold spirit shone through. Defiantly, he proclaimed, his voice echoing with determination. Luffy, I, I don't want to be in your way. I'm not afraid of death. Luffy, seemingly unfazed by the unfolding chaos, flashed a reassuring smile. Okay, I know, he replied, charging his right arm for another powerful punch. With his attention fixed on Kobe, he dismissed Helmeppo's panic-stricken protests, taunting him. You stupid son, Kobe's not afraid of death. As tension mounted, Kobe's voice rang out, cutting through the chaos. Go ahead and shoot, Luffy, behind you, he warned, his unwavering resolve commanding attention. Captain Morgan loomed ominously behind Luffy, his axe hand poised for a devastating strike. With a commanding presence, he declared, I am the great Marine Captain. Undeterred by the imminent threat, Luffy focused his energy, charging his attack against Morgan's son. Gomu, Gomu, no! He exclaimed, determination burning in his eyes. Zoro, ever the loyal swordsman, readied himself for action, his katana clenched tightly in his teeth. Pistol! Luffy declared as the impact of his punch resonated on Helmeppo's cheek from his stretch. Nice! he soundly added. In the midst of the chaos, Zoro sprang into action, his swords gleaming in the dim light. With unparalleled skill, he intercepted Morgan's attempt to strike Luffy from behind, his three swords moving with lethal precision. Morgan's attack faltered, his menacing presence temporarily halted by Zoro's intervention as he fell to the ground. Leave it to me, Captain, the swordsman proclaimed, ready for more. The execution site reverberated with the sound of a powerful blow as Captain Morgan and his son, Helmeppo, lay sprawled on the cold floor. Defeat had painted their faces with a mix of pain and humiliation. A chorus of astonished voices erupted from the surrounding Marine soldiers, their disbelief echoing through the air. The captain lost, gasped one soldier, his voice laden with disbelief and awe. Captain Morgan has been defeated. The words hung heavy, casting a shadow of uncertainty upon the area. Meanwhile, amidst the chaos, Luffy's eyes darted around, searching for his friend Kobe. Zoro, the swordsman of the group, stood resolute, his grip tightening on the edge of his katanas. With a voice that carried a hint of defiance, he addressed the surrounding soldiers, his words laced with a challenge. If you still want to arrest us, come and get us, he declared, his eyes flickering with unyielding resolve. As Zoro's words hung in the air, the soldiers exchanged quick glances, a momentary pause filled with uncertainty. Then, like a sudden shift in the wind, their hesitation melted away, replaced by a wave of exultation. Their voices rose together, a symphony of joy and liberation. As they cheered and danced, the weight of their former oppressor lifted from their shoulders. Yes, shouted one soldier, his voice tinged with triumph. We're free! The words echoed through the area, mingling with cries of exhilaration. We are out of Morgan's control, they exclaimed, the collective release of their pent-up frustrations palpable in their voices. Long live the Marines, they chanted, their pride and loyalty rekindled by this unexpected turn of events. Luffy, his brow furrowed with confusion, observed the jubilant scene unfolding before him. What's going on? he questioned, his voice filled with bewilderment. They seem to be happy that Morgan was defeated. Beside him, Kobe beamed with happiness, his fatigue momentarily forgotten. Everyone hated Morgan, he replied, a glimmer of satisfaction in his eyes. The weight of the oppressive regime had finally been lifted, and the soldiers reveled in their newfound freedom. Yet, as the execution site buzzed with celebration, Zoro, burdened by exhaustion, could no longer fight against the drain on his body. With a heavy sigh, he finally succumbed to his weariness, collapsing to the ground. Sometime later in Shelltown, the island echoed with the sound of cheer emanating from one of its houses. Laughter filled the air, escaping from the walls of Rika's humble home. 
Inside, the swordsman known as Zoro couldn't contain his mirth as he enjoyed a hearty meal. With a contented expression on his face, he remarked, I'm full, haven't eaten for nine days, almost starved to death. As the townsfolk peered through their windows, shock and worry etched across their faces, they witnessed the pirates indulging in their hospitality. Luffy, with his mouth full of food, continued the lively discussion, challenging Zoro, then it's impossible for you to last a month. Zoro, unfazed by Luffy's comment, retorted, you're so scrawny, how come you can still eat more than me? Their banter brought smiles to the onlookers' faces, momentarily easing their concerns. Meanwhile, Kobe, the young man, nervously rubbed his pink hair, consumed by worry for his newfound friends. Approaching Rika's mother, he apologized. Sorry, even I ate quite a lot. Gazing at Kobe with a warm smile, Rika's mother reassured him. Don't worry, keep eating, you saved our town. Rika, the young girl filled with admiration for her heroes, beamed at Luffy. She struck up a conversation with him, her voice filled with awe. Older brother, you're so strong. Luffy's eyes sparkled with determination as he agreed. I'll get stronger later on. Zoro couldn't resist chiming in, challenging Luffy's aspirations. Oh yeah? What are your plans next? With unbridled excitement, Luffy declared, I'm going to head for the Grand Line. His bold statement elicited a shocked response from Kobe, who couldn't contain his disbelief. What? You're saying crazy things again. Just you two. How can you enter the Grand Line? In a sudden outburst of frustration, Kobe slammed his hand on the table, emphasizing his point. Don't you understand? The world's strongest pirates all gather there. Unfazed by Kobe's resistance, Zoro calmly replied, ready to face the challenge ahead. We're going for the One Piece. It won't hurt to head in that direction. Kobe's desperation grew as he exclaimed, Zoro, even you're saying this rubbish. Zoro, now intrigued by Kobe's worry, questioned him. What are you so worried about? It's not like you're coming with us. Kobe's voice quivered with genuine concern as he shouted, Even though I'm not going, I will still worry. Can't I? Can't I worry about you guys? His tone softened, returning to normal, he continued. Luffy, even though we just met, but we are friends. With a wide grin on his face, Luffy responded happily, Yep, even though we have to part, we'll always be friends. Kobe's smile grew stronger as he held his ground, confessing, I never had friends growing up. Every time I would be picked on, no one would ever stand up for me. But the two of you taught me to live by my dream. Luffy, understanding Kobe's sentiment, explained, that's why we're heading for the Grand Line. Zoro and Kobe nodded in agreement. However, Kobe couldn't help but interject, shouting, No, no! What I meant is you're too reckless! Zoro, seizing the opportunity, tapped Kobe's head with the hilt of his sword, reminding him, First of all, you'd better worry about yourself. Kobe, taken aback by Zoro's unexpected action, awaited an explanation. Zoro pointed out to him, caution laced in his words, even though you were just doing chores on a pirate ship, you're still a small pirate. Don't underestimate the Marines' ability to gather information. If they know your past, they won't let you join for sure. The room fell silent as the Marines stormed into the building, the doors swinging open with determination. One Marine, his expression sincere but firm, stepped forward and demanded, Excuse me, we are wondering, are you really... pirates? Luffy, the spirited captain, responded with a grin. Yes, I just found my first crew member, so that would make us pirates now. The soldier tilted his marine cap and spoke with a sense of gratitude tinged with duty. Even though you are pirates, in reality, you saved our town and base. For that, we are grateful. But since you are pirates, as marines, we cannot allow you to stay any longer. Please leave this place immediately. As for the events that occurred here, we will be reporting them to headquarters. The crowd outside erupted their voices booming in protest. Hey, Marines, what kind of bullshit are you saying? Are you kidding me, or have you all gone nuts? They are this town's saviors. Undeterred, Luffy addressed the people around him. Well then, let's go. Thank you for your food, madam. As he turned to leave, both Kobe and the young girl questioned his departure. But Luffy and Zoro walked away, leaving Kobe standing there alone. The Marine soldier turned to Kobe and questioned him, Aren't you with their group? Kobe hesitated, 
Torn between loyalty and his own aspirations, Luffy looked back at him in silence, his eyes filled with unspoken understanding. I, I... Kobe struggled to find the words, his mind recounting Luffy's earlier assurance that friendship transcended distance. Finally, gritting his teeth, Kobe exclaimed, I'm not, not, I'm not with them. Luffy smiled knowingly, and as he walked away, the Marine soldier pressed Luffy. Please hold on. Is he telling the truth? He paused for a moment, his gaze fixed on Kobe before pointing at him and saying, I know what this guy used to do. Kobe, his body bandaged, looked at Luffy with sheer embarrassment. Luffy, he uttered, filled with a mixture of shame and anxiety. Luffy continued to mock him, poking fun at his past. I can't remember where, but he used to be with this fat female pirate. Luffy's gestures emphasized the size of the woman. Stop, don't say any more, Kobe pleaded, realizing that his secrets were about to be revealed. In a panic, Kobe thought to himself, if they know I worked on a pirate ship before, then they won't let me join the Marines. The Marine soldier watched the drama unfold. Luffy persisted, poking at Kobe's vulnerability as he thought, please, shut up, until Kobe, overwhelmed with frustration, lashed out and struck Luffy across the face. Luffy's straw hat fell to the floor. The onlookers stood in awe as Luffy smirked and retaliated, punching Kobe. You, you deserve a beating. Blood started to trickle from Kobe's nose, a consequence of his impulsive action. The two engaged in a fierce exchange of blows, their fists flying in anger. Damn you! You deserve a beat down, they shouted at each other. The Marine soldier, alarmed by the escalating fight, commanded, Both of you stop it! I won't allow this town to get in any more fights. Zoro, holding onto Luffy's red vest, tried to calm him down. Hey, you went overboard. Stop it. Kobe, knocked down to the floor, gasped for air while the soldier pointed at the door, his voice filled with disdain. I know he isn't your friend. Please leave this town immediately. As Kobe lay on the ground, he reflected on the situation. He did it for me. He wanted to make me mad, make me hit him he realized, his thoughts tinged with gratitude. Even in the very end, I still needed their care. Luffy picked up his straw hat and walked outside, wearing a satisfied smile as Zoro taunted the other soldiers surrounding the house. Come on, didn't you want to arrest me? Struggling to his feet, blood trickling from his nose, Kobe berated himself. I am so damn useless. I am an imbecile. If I don't take this chance, then everything they did will be a waste. Determined, he picked himself up, his nerves finally gathering together. Bowing before the soldier, Kobe declared, Please let me join the Marines. Even if it's chores, I will still do them. The crowd watched with anticipation, curious about the outcome. After his fervent plea, Kobe thought to himself, Good, I did well. Hope filled his heart as he waited for a response. A Marine soldier entered the room, his expression filled with concern. Commander. I'm against it. We cannot accept a person whose past is unclear to us. There have been events where pirates have joined the Marines to be spies, so we have to properly check his background before we can decide. As Kobe watched with bated breath, he couldn't contain his determination any longer. He shouted at the top of his voice, I am a man whose dream is to become a member of the Marines. The room fell into a sudden pause, everyone fixated on his declaration. The commander, holding his marine cap, walked past Kobe with measured steps. Don't think that we don't know your past as a pirate. You underestimate our power, but I will still allow you to join. Kobe's heart skipped a beat as relief washed over him. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, he exclaimed, filled with gratitude and renewed purpose. The outskirts of Shelltown stretched out before them, a humble harbor bathed in the golden glow of the setting sun. Seagulls danced through the air, their wings slicing through the gentle breeze as they weaved intricate patterns against the canvas of the sky. Zoro and Luffy stood at the harbor's edge, their eyes fixed on the wooden boat adorned with a pristine white sail. Zoro turned to Luffy, a mischievous glint in his eyes and uttered words that carried a hint of admiration. Nice act. This way, even though he's been a pirate before, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Luffy beamed in response, his unwavering faith in the future evident in his smile. 
I believe Kobe will become stronger and more independent in the future. With a firm grip on the rope tethered to the boat, Luffy's anticipation bubbled over. Zoro's voice resounded, filled with a sense of urgency. Time to go, or else there's no telling what else will happen. Not leaving anything behind, that's what pirates are all about. Luffy chuckled heartily, a laugh that carried the carefree his nature. That's what I'm saying. As the sun's warmth faded, a weary Kobe emerged from the distance, his tired steps echoing the trials he had faced. Luffy, he cried out, his voice laden with gratitude and respect. Kobe saluted the pirates, his actions defying the norms of his marine upbringing. Thank you very much. I will never forget you for the rest of my life. Zoro couldn't help but interject, his voice laced with humor. I've never witnessed a marine saluting pirates before, he quipped, prompting Luffy's infectious laughter to fill the air. Luffy's face lit up with a radiant smile as he addressed Kobe directly. Kobe, we'll cross paths again someday. The commander, standing tall next to Kobe, commanded his troops with authority. Group salute, he bellowed, and in unison, the Marines raised their hands in a gesture of respect. The sight of loyal soldiers saluting pirates sent ripples of shock through the ranks. As the small boat carried Luffy and Zoro away, Luffy waved his hands in the air, bidding a heartfelt farewell. Zoro, his eyes brimming with contentment, sat at the boat's edge, his smile radiating. The commander's words reached Kobe's ears, brimming with a mixture of admiration and admonishment. You have remarkable friends, he commended. Kobe, overwhelmed by emotions, tears streaming down his cheeks, mustered a resolute response. Yes, sir. The commander's voice resonated with a mixture of pride and discipline. We just saluted pirates and have violated the Marines' codes. So, the punishment will be no food for a week. Yes, sir the Marines chorus, acknowledging their transgression with unwavering loyalty. As the boat sailed away, carried by the gentle current, Luffy and Zoro's faces radiated joy and excitement. The calm seas mirrored their spirits, offering solace and anticipation for the journey ahead. Luffy cheered with unbridled enthusiasm, his voice filling the air. We're off! Grand line, here we come! Seated comfortably, Luffy settled down his gaze fixed on the horizon, ready to embrace the challenges that awaited them. After the addition of pirate hunter Zoro into his crew, Luffy begins his journey once again, but they don't know there are only more difficult challenges ahead of them. The legendary pirate Gold D. Roger, the only one to be called the Pirate King, left a huge treasure known as the One Piece. Everyone in the world is searching for the location of this vast wealth. You could say this is one of the most dangerous periods in the history of the Seven Seas.